We thought nobody was looking. And so what that's going to be the whole entire. Thing. Yeah, I was like, oh, I can't send that. That's like literally all. Well, that way technology actually it's, works. I can tell you it never seems to work anytime I'm here for a class, which I know is very it's very working perfectly right now. Is so it? The, oh, the, the it looks like it's lifted. Oh perfect. <laughs> is it really? Yeah, it's like which I oh wait. Halloween is real this engineering company that put people first from how they do their businesses to how they expand those businesses. A high level of thinking is being required by everyone. I get a lot of phone calls and questions from people that constantly ask me, who are these guys celebrating? So in 1987, we did something that had never been done before in the real estate business. A compensation plan that rewarded our associates for building the business. And that's property shit. You were right there at the beginning of property shit. We were rebels.
I'm sure you were on time for both. Okay. That should, I'll get more of this. Not only the real business, engineering company, they put people first from how they do their businesses to how they expand their businesses. A high level of people is required. Yeah. Yes. Don't tell them how I get a lot of phone calls and questions from people that constantly ask me, who are these guys celebrators? <laughs> So in 1987, we did something that had never been done before in the real estate business. A compensation plan and rewarded our associates for building the business. That's probably shit. You were right there at the beginning of the partnership. We were rebels. First, it was real estate agents gaining leverage through adding people to their business and creating what's been called teams. You know, 20 something years ago, people told me I was an idiot. Maybe 89 or 90, we would try to support real estate agents duplicating themselves. The industry and even the real estate agent themselves was not ready for that outlook. Nothing more than one simple thing, and that is taking your lead generation and your admin to additional locations. Why is e-commerce the inevitable future? Because it's a natural extension of the information age. Someone took your data because they had control of it and turned it into free data that you lost control of. We're living in a time where technology is rewriting the rules for just about everything. We are not a real estate company anymore. We're a technology company who is building the real estate platform that our agents and their customers will prefer to use. you know, this real estate company totally reinventing itself, coming up with what the machine learning problems are they should be solving, 
and then coming up with what data they need for those machine learning problems to be solved, and then prioritizing by where's the bank for the buck and figuring out how to do it in parallel. Over, over for Kelly, the Kelly app. When I made the comment uh, back, I guess, to family reading or even before that, I said we're a technology company. Uh, boy, you would have thought I had said the weirdest thing, right? People were going, you're an idiot, Keller. Well, you said, and now I knew exactly what you were building. I didn't want them to know. Yeah. But it was quite a declaration. I'm spending a billion dollars for technology. You would automatically Okay, so if I let someone build my technology for me, what do I mean? Amazon owns their software, Facebook owns their software. Yes. Yeah. Netflix owns their software, right? Okay, so why would we tell the real estate they just don't own their software? Or don't make their company in partnership with Why would we tell them not to own it? All right, well, before we get started too deep, first off, what did you think of the video? Did you learn anything in there that you didn't know already? Hello Ames has come through a lot of transformations. Back in 1983, when the company was started, it was this small little company as a result of the world changing in Remax or disruption of re, um, changing Things changed the world because of Green Max, their disruption. You know, prior to 50 years ago, everybody was what we call a dependent model company. Those are the companies like HER, Cobalt Banker, um, Howard Hanna, et cetera. One broker, everybody works under that umbrella. Everybody does things the same way, but they're broker centric. They wanted the agents to rely on the brokerages so that if they wanted to do anything, it had to be the same way. Everybody used the same set of rules. Um, they provided some training support on the front end, but not really to grow the agent over time. Well, Keller Williams took the, the, the approach that, you know, people that get in this business are entrepreneurial by design. And so we wanted to make sure you had the latitude to run your business the way you wanted to run your business. And that's what Remax did first back when. However, Remax didn't have anything else attached to it. Remax didn't provide training. They didn't provide support. Basically, you could hang your license and agents paid a high monthly fee in exchange for a commission split. So in 1983, when Gary Keller started Keller Williams, it was so that you could have the best of both worlds. We are the interdependent model. So we provide training and support, but not just on the front end at all levels. But the agent can be entrepreneurial and do their business the way they want to do their business. 
Bellin may do her business completely different than Fawn. And that's okay. But we also want to give you the infrastructure, the tools, and all the things to be successful. So that's how we came about. As you see, as things have transpired, um, and at the end, I'm going to show you another video if we have time. I know it's going to be a long, it's a long day because you've all had full days up until now. And now, you know, we're going into the evening, but that's okay. I'm glad you're here. Um, I know I've met all of you at some point or another. But I always like to tell my story, but I also want to get to know you just a little bit. Our, our I call it our elevator speech, um, just to know where you came from and different things that you might be able to bring to the table. So I'm going to start by just, I'll give you my elevator speech and then we'll kind of go around the room here real quick. Um, I'm Dela Bishop. I'm from Delaware, Ohio originally. I still live in Southern Delaware County. I never got too far from home. And I, uh, my, I went to Ohio State. My first job out of college, my big first big girl job, as I call it, was for a company called Art and Carrington. They're a third party administrator. They process claims for self insured companies, medical, dental, disability workers. What I did for them was I actually hired in as a trainer for them. I wrote their first training program. Then I was promoted into a position where I ran part of their operations area. And then from there, I was promoted into another position where I managed all their mergers and acquisitions. They were the fourth largest company of their type at that time in the nation. And so we were buying companies all over. So from the due diligence process to the actual merger, and then after, it was, they were, it was my baby. And I loved it. It was a wonderful job. It was a great learning experience. I traveled a lot. I was in my 20s, so that was a lot of fun. Um, it all just wasn't conducive until to the next thing that happened in my life. And I had triplets. It'll be 28 years next month. So um, I was I lucky enough. Huh? See, you learned something all the <laughs> tonight. <laughs> so if you've met Blair with Town Title, she's one of them. Yeah. Uh, my son, Bryce, works for uh, Rapid Mortgage, so you might have met him. <laughs> my other son says, I'm not getting into real estate. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I um, I was lucky. I hired my own replacement before I had my kids. was home with them when they were little. Volunteered doing everything I could, and then decided I'm going to one story. And I thought, I'll get my real estate license and do it part-time. Famous last words. <laughs> I jumped in full Full throttle, got my license. I actually joined another brokerage to begin with because I had a friend there. She goes, I'll help you get going, blah, blah, blah. And I haphazardly was doing okay just because I knew a lot of people. I communicated with a lot of people, but I thought, you know, it's going to be easier than this. But kind of like I wrote a training program. I was a textbook kind of person. So I was looking for systems and things to make it easier. And Keller Williams has been around since 1983. But only been in Columbus for 20 years. I've been with Keller Williams for most 19 years. So that showed it was Keller who back then. And now we've gone from Keller who being Keller back then. We're the largest yeah. brand in central Ohio. So um, I was, after I got here, just, um, just to put it in perspective, my first year in real estate, elsewise, I closed 1.2 million. I thought, oh, okay, that's all right. I came here. And I got the magic goal. If you don't hear me say anything else tonight other than this, listen to this. Your database is the whole is your business. I don't care. You can be the best contract writer in the world. You can be the best at showing houses. If you don't have a database, you don't communicate with it. You don't have a business. So that's what I learned early on when I first got here. I got all of my contacts in there, and we didn't have what we have now. Technology wise, it was way different. In fact, we had to buy technology from other places and splice it all together, and it wasn't wasn't easy to use. And anyway, so I I really focused on that. Everybody I knew, I got them in there, communicated with them on a regular basis, and I went from my first year closing one point two million to my second year closing two point six million. That's so pretty pretty good, double, more than double. The next year I went to four million. The next year I went to six million. Then I stalled out the next year at six million. I'm like, what the heck? Why I'm growing two million every year? Why am I not this year? Well, I was sitting in a training class, very much like what you guys are right now, and realized you have to continue to grow your database. Mm -hmm. I was doing the same thing over and over, and expecting a different result. That's the definition of insanity, right? I thought, duh, I've got to get real on purpose about this. 
So at that point, I, I made myself a piece of paper because I'm very old school. And I put one through 10 with lines on it. And I taped it to my desk. And if I had hired a part-time assistant at that point to do the things that I either didn't like to do or they were time consuming. Like back then we used to run ads in newspapers and things like that. So she took care of all that for me. And I told her, you've got to help me stay accountable. And at the end of the week, every week on Friday, if I don't have all 10 of these filled in, I'm not allowed to leave. So I did that for a month. And boom, my business started really moving. And then I did it for another month and it started moving. So the next year I put eight million. And then they had approached me for the second time about becoming a team leader. And I, the first time I declined because I was just getting my business where I wanted it to be. And then the second time they asked me, actually, I was at a different Keller Williams office uh, located in, like, there. There's a, a Keller Williams office in that space in Westerville, but it's not the same office that I was a team leader of, if that makes sense. And I loved my ownership group and I really wanted to help them. So I moved into the team leader role. So I'm actually the longest running team leader in our whole region. I've been doing this for 14 years. <laughs> and I've been with this ownership group for 11. So that's my story. And I'm sticking to it. <laughs> All right. So if you guys could just go around the room, say your name, what you did or do, and uh, how long you've been in real estate, that'd be great. I'm sorry, to be Bella. So my name is Bella Rodriguez. I am from Argentina. I've been in the business almost two years now. Um, I work full time at a community health center, so that's why I do full time, and I'm doing real estate part time. And I know there's no such thing, but we're sticking to that, right? That's all right. <laughs> part time for me. And that's it, right? What else did you want me to share? Just thinking about you. you help kids. Um, I have two boys, 15 and seven. Um. Uh, a 15 year old is in soccer, he plays lacrosse. Um, I have a boxer named Mila, and I live in Pikmin. Oh, yep, I grew up in Pikmin. Yay! Well, why don't you just go next? <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right. I, 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 I want to turn around so I can see everybody. Okay, hi everyone. I'm Talisha Haywood. Um, like I might as well start there. I grew up in Pickerington, I now live in now Winchester. Um, a little bit about my background. Um, so I have done everything, like from cell to the desk work, the admin work, all that. But uh, more recently, I was sharing with some of you guys that I used to do what Pam does here um, and direct their first impression. I did it for a year at consultants. And this was because I wanted to get into real estate. And my sister was a realtor there. And she's like, girl, get your foot in the door. There's an admin role. Because I was afraid to kind of go out just full commission. So I took advantage of that. And then one of my neighbors, before I moved into my first home, um, offered me a job at a mortgage company. And I was like, hmm, I'm getting into a new home. This could really, you know, get some insight. So I went ahead and took that admin role. And it was just like my steps were just ordered <laughs> perfectly. And then... Before I knew it, it was that transition time. I finally got to do what my dream job was. I've wanted to be a realtor since I don't know how, 16 years old, because I'm really strong in sales and people's person, obviously. Um, so yeah. now I passed my test August 18th. I shared with some of you guys, so I am so new right now. Um, I am married. My ring is in the shop right now. <laughs> I even fell out the other day. I was oh telling about it. You're crazy, right? Yeah. So I'm married five years to my husband. He's a minister at my church, Columbus Christian Center. I don't know if you guys ever heard of it. It's right up the street. Um, and we have two kids. I have a four-year-old boy, and his personality is very much like mine, super outgoing. Um, and I have a one-year-old baby girl. So Joseph and Joy, um, they take, they're my world, Michael, Joseph, and Joy. Um, I also, something fun about me is I also... I'm really into stretching, so I do do a stretch. It's not yoga. I've never taken a yoga class, but I do like a stretch meditation kind of ministry. I just kind of started something the Lord put on my heart. It's exciting. I actually was talking to Jill, and she was encouraging me to get out on the oval. I love it. Oh, yeah. Do it right. Now. Yes, and, yeah. and, and, and do a stretch session. So yeah. I'm like, okay, she told me to touch base with you. Yes, um, I need it right now. I was <laughs> <laughs> like super flexible all my life. I grew up being a cheerleader, which is why I got that bubble personality. But um, so I just thought it was really flexible. And then I also was in dance at church, and it just kind of all came together. And I started just hosting stretch sessions throughout the summer, and all my friends they loved it. 
Um, so we can yeah. we'll talk about that. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Awesome. So yeah, that that's a little bit of, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. No, I'm just really eager and excited to hit the ball. I mean, hit the ground running. And then also, um, this is full time. I'm not doing anything else other than, oh, oh my God, how can I forget? I do do a mentorship program, um, where we go in like mostly Columbus city schools, but we're expanding. It's called Beautiful Butterflies. It's a mentorship program where we mentor girls who um, this, the teachers have trouble with, like the ones who are getting the fights, the ones who are arguing and everything. And it's just that place, safe place for them to kind of open up and inspire them and encourage them that how that. great they are, you oh, know, because all they're hearing is you're expelled, you're a hot mess. You're, so we are that safe space oh. to really dig in and talk to them and be like their sister. Mm -hmm. So I do do that. Um, I'll take like two or three classes. So I might have like two or three classes in a week and sitting there with them for 45 minutes and just talk and do um, activities and teach them, empower them, you I know, tell, tell them my story, you yeah. know, and just kind of encourage them to be great. I yeah. That. So that is something yeah. else I do too. Yeah, yeah. follow that up. Oh, yeah. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when we met. Yeah, I love it. I love it so much. Yeah, it got a little delayed because the whole strike thing that just happened. <laughs> but I just talked to my leader, the CEO founder of it. She said, we're going to start about to start up again. So I'm really excited. I'm messing with They messed me. They've been messaging me on Instagram. Uh, like, uh, are you coming to my class again? Are you coming to our school? So, that's amazing. Yeah, that's awesome. Awesome. <laughs> All right. So it would be one month. So I'm fine. Um, I've been in real estate. I took my test in January, like mid January. Um, was super excited to pass and then I probably am a slow burn in this I have a full-time job and I have a side gig too so I was a certified athletic trainer mm -hmm. in Ohio for over 20 some years and I pivoted in November and just took a job at OSU within IT to keep the benefits and everything with that mm -hmm. while I was going to school for real estate mm -hmm. then passed my test and I'm still doing that job um, so it's hard to kind of have you know, a full-time job. And then on the weekends, I work a farmer's market. I like to say I sling the meats. I work for uh, a <laughs> I'm a huge support local person. So like, you know, you won't see me at a bread lobster probably. Like I'm huge support local. So this is a local company called North Country Charcuterie. And I- They're from delicious. Having, my yeah, from having that job, I can also make some really impressive um, charcuterie boards, like with those cheese and you know, crackers. <laughs> yeah, like um, that's you know, and that I just, I mean, I'm not like doing that as business, but I can definitely, absolutely. Um, and then let's see what else. I oh, I got married. I, I did like we were together. My husband and I were together for 15 years before we got married. Um, he is the best thing ever, but we decided to get married out in Wyoming on the side of a mountain. Mm -hmm. We woke up that morning and it was snowing in oh. May. It was 23 degrees, very funny. And it was an outdoor <laughs> wedding, but it made for really good pictures. Yeah. Um, and he's a football coach. So I go to football games too. So I was on the field as an athletic trainer and now I'm just on the field as, I guess, the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, that's some of my story. Hi, I'm Stacey Tessacusa. I'm the team leader for the home team. Um, I've been in this business almost nine years, coming up on nine, nine years. I started at Remax and then I was at Capital Partners and then met Dela, love Dela, and then came here and followed her after I met her at Old. Actually, we met it on the golf course, the Memorial Tournament to begin with. That could be right. Oh, <laughs> I think she, she came in a dress and heels. I'm like, oh my God, her poor feet today. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I really make cool things. And you put her in your database and the rest is history. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> and then I met, and then I saw you over there. Yeah. yeah. So you just joined? Oh, no, I've been here for oh, over okay. a year. Years, five, She's five, here five, with some of her the people on her team today. So. Oh, okay, gotcha. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, no, I was with Capital Partners for, I think, for three, four years, and then I came here and I was in here almost four years? I, I, I don't know. Fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm divorced, and I have a cat, and... And she's a great decorator. You'll have to go see her all. Like, oh, oh, yeah. I, I have been walking to me. Yeah, here. It inspired me. Oh, I love it. Yeah. 
Um, that's about it for me. I'm kind of boring. Real estate. Real estate's 24 7 for me. Never sleep. That makes you feel better. All right. Uh, I'm with Grant's bottom. I am Keller Williams. A little over here goes from here in two months or a year or more. Uh, I met Stacy. I was her assistant manager at a jewelry store. So I can tell you that I'm the fall out of your room. That's pretty common. Pretty common. Don't, 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 don't think it was bad luck or anything. You know, they, they can find another one and put it back in the Yeah, so I worked there for like 10 years and I always wanted to get into real estate, but you guys know it's like pretty daunting, like going fully into commission. And, but uh, Stacy stayed after me, and um, it just so happened that like I had a daughter. She's three now, and my life really changed. Then I used to be uh, while I was selling jewelry, I was also a professional fighter at oh, one point in time. And um, but then after my daughter was born, I didn't sign any contracts, and I couldn't be on the sales floor there at the jewelry store as much. So it was a good opportunity for me to make the switch over, and I just completed my first year. I actually ended up my sales yesterday so you're in two months in i'm a little over two million dollars so well i have a lot of it to stacy mm -hmm. um, she's helped me out a lot and i'm glad that i joined Kelly, Williams, especially the beginning because there's so many life rafts that they throw to you and uh yeah uh, just really happy with my decision and you know, looking forward to my future here so um, I'm Kate Bridge, so I just joined Stacey's team last week, which I'm so excited about. Um, I grew up in Bexley, Ohio, and um, I graduated from OSU last year, um, and I got a degree in psychology. Thought I was going to follow in my parents' footsteps. They're both like in the psychology field, did some research positions, and I was like, hate this, can't do it, not for me. Um. So then, I told you, uh, yeah, so, yeah, exactly. That's what I keep telling myself. It wasn't all for nothing. <laughs> um, yeah. So then I got my license in March, and I was with Cutler Real Estate. Um, but I wasn't on a team. I liked it there, but I just wasn't. I wasn't growing as fast as I wanted to. Um, so then. I connected with Stacy, my mom's hairdresser, and her are friends. So it came about very naturally. And I love it so far. And I, yeah, I'm so excited. I live in German Village. I'm, yeah, I love it. Um, not very <laughs> single. <laughs> um, yeah. Very good. I do have a funny story about, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't know some notes in the I had a funny story. <laughs> I had a funny story that happened today at the Young Professional Networking meeting. I, a guest speaker came in and uh, he had this letter portfolio that he's given away, but he had to answer his trivia question. And his question was, what movie had two future governors in it? And I'm like a huge... 80s action film stuff, <laughs> and it's Predator, and he's like, you can get back to me at the end of class. You know, so right. uh, Jesse Ventura. Oh. And anyway, I blurted it out, and I got that today. I thought pretty funny because everybody thought that I was really smart. But I didn't kill myself in the right place right now. I didn't that question my entire life. And last but not least. Uh, um, my name is PJ. Uh, I've been a licensed agent for like 10 months, maybe. Um, I'm a busy person, unfortunately, so I don't get a whole lot of time to spend on my business, but I intend to leave my day job in March to go full time. Um, but I got to start now when I get there. So uh, I have a day job. I'm, I work in. <clears throat> In IT and at AEP, which is an interesting, strange job. Um, I don't like corporate America. I'm also in an MBA program, which finishes in November. Oh boy. Uh -huh. um, yeah, I'm a partial owner and the operator of a family multifamily 
and I own an internet gaming business, and I have a very, very expensive addiction to murder holes. <laughs> <laughs> and the it's not a cute hobby. <laughs> well, I can see some future branding graphs on that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, my, so my, my middle name is Wynn. What? Wynn. Wynn. Oh, I like it. Like W Y N N E. So my real estate LLC is Winner Real Estate. And then, like, all my motorsports stuff is like winter motorsports, and then everything else. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, just kind of. Yeah, I see a cool logo and wrap there. Can we talk a little bit about branding today? Do you remember the building company? No, I, I, so my, my headquarters is in New Albany, but now I'm like full time remote. So I sit in the jail cell in my house. Oh, <laughs> oh that's <laughs> well, I'm going to give you guys. That are ready to eat and go to real estate full time. A book that I would like you guys to read. I'm going to say my fan. Well, I would like to read it. I'm already my goal. Why did I get my bonus? Like, the second of the March, it seems like I'm going to have any reason. Yeah, mine is kind of, I want to get through. I want them to pay for my time off for the truth. You know what I'm saying? Pressure women here or you, you don't go out, out there. And if I off the door, you can't get back in. Five dollars. You're the Okay. Yeah. I can... Oh, I got my key card. Thank you for reminding me. Rachel was like, you have your key card. Thank so you. I've actually met the gentleman that wrote this book. He was a state policeman and left a six-figure income to get into real estate. And now he is all things real estate in Keller Williams. Um, it's called Leaving Six Figures by John Clyde. And it's a great story, great inspiration, great instruction on how to do that. So I recommend that read. Even if you're busy, you know, get the um, Audible and, and stick it on in your car. So. And I know we have many. Uh, Devin. Devin. I haven't met. I don't think I've met you yet, Devin. Have I? <laughs> I'm Kayla, the, the team leader. So here, it's so nice to meet you. We just told about ourselves and where we came from and how long we've been licensed. So if you want to share. Hi, I'm Devin. I'm Lake. Hi, Devin. <laughs> um, I uh, work full-time at the agency as I the project manager. Oh, you and PJ have something in common there? Oh, it's the board of mayor. Board. No, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I used to be a PA with portfolio analyst. Oh, okay. And you know, I can do this. No, it's just awful. Awesome. Okay. Uh, yes. uh, so, yeah, anyway, that's what I do professionally. Uh, outside of that, I'm a huge gym goer. It's sort of like my hobby or fun time. Not so fun, but I'll take but yeah, real estate. I uh, just got my uh, license in May and I started here at Kelly Williams four weeks ago. My mom's been in real estate for about 10 years and so kind of nudging me to get licensed so I can get, get into it. And she's actually working on her brokerage license now, too. So I've got to tag along in a lot of her real estate endeavors and spurred my curiosity. So uh, here I am, ready to learn and get after it. So very good. All right, we're going to, what we're going to do tonight, um, like I said, I want to go ahead. Really quick, I just you all know Rachel? Yeah. Okay. I just flipped the screen for you, so if you want to do a, a share screen. Yeah, we are going to do share screen for okay. sure. I'm going to. Have fun, guys. Fun we're going to talk about the Keller Williams Systems and Model Can Lead Generation. We're going to combine them into one, which I think is going to be an easy thing to do. Um, we've already talked about like the Keller Williams story and some of those things um, when I was telling my story. So we're going to kind of fast forward to page seven. And we're going to talk about the six personal perspectives. And you can ask Stacy, you can ask Bellin. Um, you can ask Bond because they were all in bold today. Every, everything Color Williams does, they weave the six personal perspectives into it. So you're going to hear it and see it a lot over time. But it's, you know, everything in life is about your mindset, your attitude, your approach to things. Best example I can give is when my kids were little, everywhere I would go, I would take them in the stroller. 
people would stop by and they'd go, oh man, I'm glad that you and not me. Well, I was glad it was me and not them too. Mm -hmm. But it was because I wanted children desperately. And then people would look, oh my God, it's ridiculous. Hi, would you mind just sticking those out there on the table? Ooh, I appreciate that so much. <laughs> and so anyway, um, that was, um, you know, mindset. It's all about mindset, everything you do. Let's flip the page real quick and then I'll let you get pizza and we can eat while we're talking here. So the six personal perspectives here is the first one is to commit to self mastery And that means just what it says. You have to, you can only control yourself, right? You can't control others. You can't control outside circumstances. You can only control yourself or how you react to that situation. So committing to self mastery, both in holding yourself accountable and to doing the things that you need to do. The next one is the 80-20 rule. How, who wants to tell what the 80-20 rule is? We just talked about this today, Paul. I can tell. Go. So it's saying that 20% of what you spend your time on actually equals 80% of your business. So you really have to focus on that one thing and do it really well, and that should equal 80% of your business. Whereas if you focus on the 80% of stuff, you're only going to get 20% of the result. So the 80-20 rule, do, do the most important 20%. Very good. Good job, Juan. The next one is move from E to P. I didn't say E to P. From E to P, which means from entrepreneurial to purposeful. So I'm going to pick on my gym buddy back there. So have you ever been trying to beat something in the gym? Maybe it's like lift weights and get to a certain number of pounds or whatever. And you get to a point where you, you can only go so far and you just can't get over that hump. You can't do any more. And at that point, when you're trying to do more, is it like your muscles are twinging and shaking and you're pushing as hard as you can and all of that. And then all of a sudden you keep doing that. And then you get there. You ever had that happen? Uh, yeah. That's a breakthrough. Well, when most of the people that get into this business are entrepreneurial in some way, shape, or form anyway. And that's what, what led you to, to real estate. That will only take you so far. But when you get purposeful, so you can be successful and be entrepreneurial, but you're going to hit a ceiling. And then when you get purposeful about the things you do every day, that's when you break through that ceiling to get to the next level. And it won't happen just once. You're going to go through lots of levels, lots of ceilings, just like I did. You know, as a new agent, I did okay my first year. But then that next year, after really being purposeful about my database, I more than doubled my business. And then I doubled it again. And the whole time I was adding to my database and, and keep, kept on working my database, I was also learning other things and adding them to my tool belt in real estate. So you want to be purposeful. The next one is being learning based. So that purposeful leads right into that learning base. Others have been successful. Why not follow what others have done? Others have gone before you. Be, be learning based. Go to classes. Go to your mentoring meetings. Talk to your mentor. Get instruction because that's what's going to help you learn and grow. We have two national conventions each year, Mega Camp and Family Reunion, and they're not just raw, raw conventions. They are all learning. They are all classes. And Family Reunion, which is going to be in February, when you go to that, in addition to learning from Gary Keller himself, you can go to over 280 breakout sessions based on what you want to learn. So be learning based. Continue to grow and learn. Don't just feel like, oh, I know everything and stop here. If you really want to grow a big business and a big life, Keller Williams isn't just about selling real estate. There's a lot of personal in it as well. Personal growth, personal development. The next one is remove your limiting beliefs. How many of you are sitting right here, right now, and if you got a call and the person on the other line said, I want you to come list my $1.2 million house. Would any of you have a limiting belief about that? Like, oh my God, oh my God, how I can't do that. I don't know what to do. I think no, I'd be so friends. I, <laughs> I would just call my mentor. Yeah, that's right. That's the right answer. So many folks when they get in this business, they're like, I knew, I don't know, I can't go ever. We don't want you to do that. Remove those limiting beliefs. First off, you can do anything to set your mind to. Secondly, if you don't know the answer, somebody knows the answer. You've got me, you've got Mark, 
You've got your mentors. You've got all of these resources here. If we don't know the answer, we'll phone a friend. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, we can call the, the attorneys for the state if we have to. So be cognizant of limited, limiting beliefs because sometimes we're our own worst enemy. Mm -hmm. If I said, you have to make 20 calls a day for real estate, I'm, like, I'm too busy, I can't do that. That's a limiting belief. Yeah. You can, you just have to be purposeful about it. It doesn't have to be just a call. It can be other kinds of content. Mm -hmm. And then the last one's be accountable. Be accountable to yourself. But you know what? Usually most people can't be accountable to just themselves. They need help. They need a mentor or someone to hold them accountable. Keep them moving. A team. Mm -hmm. Find an accountability partner. Be accountable because that can see results. A lot of people get into this business because they want to be their own boss. They want a flexible schedule. But you know what? If you get into this business and that's the reason why, you're in it for the wrong reason. Because you're not going to be successful. You're not going to do what you need to do to get done. You need to be accountable. So I know you, those of you who have kids, if your child was laying up here on the floor and they couldn't breathe, would you do whatever you had to do to get that child help? Absolutely. Your real estate business, and that lead generation piece needs to become like that. Mm -hmm. Because I don't want you to be sitting here six months from now and go, I haven't done any business. I paid all this money to get licensed and yeah. join the board and all of those things. You have to show up. You have to be accountable. Just like the baby laying on the floor that can't breathe. Whatever it takes, you're going to get that baby breathing. That's what you've got to do is whatever it takes. To get your goals where you need to be. We're going to talk more about goals. So, those are the six personal perspectives. On pages 10, 11, and 12, this section talks about 10 things you can do right now to create business for yourself. Your sphere of influence. I've already talked about your database. Draft a letter or mailer to send out to those people. Work from a plan. That's what we're going to work on here in a minute. It's our business plan. Do open houses. If you don't have listings yet, guess what? We've got almost 300 agents in this office that have listings. Mm -hmm. They can't sit in all of them and hold them open every weekend. Things are on the market a little bit longer than they used to be. So there's open houses to do. Guess what? Any buyers you need, master scripts. So when they come in the door, you can convert them into a buyer. And that's your buyer. You don't have to share it with anybody. So open houses are a great lead source for you. Use Facebook. Let people know what you do. Have a call to action with it. Start writing personal notes. How many of you have gotten a personal handwritten note in the last year? Did you open it? Yeah. yeah. Did you read it? Yeah. Did you keep it? Yeah. Personal notes mean everything. All the stuff that comes in the mail, most of it's bills, right? You throw away. Oh, somebody sent me a card, a personal, whatever it is. Personal notes are huge. Start phoning through your database. Visit other agents' open houses and go on area realtor tours. All the areas around Central Ohio, you can find it on MLS. They hold tour groups once a month. That's a great way to see how other agents are pricing homes. Um, you know, learn how to, what inventory looks like, how to show up home. Sign up for sales training. And then do something that moves your business forward every day. Real estate needs to become like second nature. So that, you know, like Eric, when you walk in some place, you've got Keller Williams on your chest. Yeah. You know what? We, we promote Nike. We promote all these other companies. But you know what? Why not promote your own brand? Yeah. And guess what? Those are conversation starters. Mm -hmm. if you, and if you're a girl and you don't want to wear you know, a polo shirt, we have name tags. That's why we order each one of you guys two name tags so you can even lose one and still have one. I can tell you I had so many questions over the years when I would go places where people would engage in a real estate conversation because of my name tag. Mm -hmm. Going through the grocery store line. Didn't know the lady's name, but she was she checked me out multiple weeks. You know, she recognized who I was. We knew each other's face. I would wear my name tag because I'd be on my way home from work, showing houses or whatever. And she says one day, "Aren't you a realtor?" And I said, "Yeah." And she said, "You know, I'm getting a divorce. I'm going to buy a condo. Would you be able to help me?" Absolutely, I would be able to help. I was in the post office. I had this little old man come up to me and go, "You're a realtor." 
can you tell me how much my house is worth on Daisy Drive? And I'm like, you know what? I'd be happy to. Let me get your information and I'll gather the, the details for you. My kids' baseball season, we're going to talk about lead generation again. One baseball season, I could attribute $45,000 worth of income. And it was all about where having the logo. And I'll elaborate on that in a minute. All right, before we jump into the rest, I'm going to let you guys go ahead and grab pizza while it's warm. I'm actually going to miss. Are you guys cold or I'm hot? Um, we know. <laughs> I'm actually going to crank the air down just a little bit. So if you guys are, I don't think you get uncomfortable coming, but go ahead. There's paper plates and so forth out here. You can watch that. But so far, they did a lot Is given oh, yeah. 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 We have water, water, the 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 Yes. <laughs> Oh, you got the barrel of butter. Yeah, I did. You <laughs> chair, um, mm -hmm. chair. I don't need all that. I don't need <laughs> now, when you were saying something about realtor and tours, they do. Where, where I, I've never heard of that. Can you find out about that? <laughs> if you go on and um, Columbus Realtor site. They have, there's a drop down with a schedule of when area realtor meetings are like, what's your Thursday morning in the Miami? Gahanna is, I'm just, yeah, Gahanna, I think it is actually. Mm -hmm. <laughs> is on Fridays at nine. Um, there's mid there's different parts like Tri County is where in Pickerington. Um, so they have meetings and they take them tours, or mm -hmm. and they tour the new listings that have just come up. Wow. Okay. Thanks so much. Sam. You can turn to page 30. Three, three zero. Three zero. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
So one of the things I do want to mention, you know, this world is not as friendly as it used to be. You know, I feel so lucky I grew up in this little bubble. And unfortunately, the world's just gone a little haywire, even more so recently than in the past. Safety is a huge, huge concern. And there have been some agents, you probably heard the agent about the agent Texas a few years ago that was abducted until there was an agent here in Columbus that was a she was actually a new home rep and she was raped. Um, there have been stories about the years. Don't ever take your safety for granted. It's it's needs to be top of mind. Asking someone to come in the office and meet with you first is a great idea because if someone's willing to come in and meet you with the office, chances are good they are legitimate and serious about wanting to purchase or sell a home. Especially if you're going to a rural property or something like that. Mm -hmm. We do have a procedure that if you are ever someplace and you're doing an open house or you're showing you're showing a property and you feel threatened, call the office, ask for the red file or whatever address you're located at. And that's our clue to send help to you. Always let somebody know where you are, have a buddy system, even if it's your spouse or whatever. <clears throat> Here are some tips for being safe. Um, again, ask them to come into the office first or use some place like Starbucks or Wendy's or, or what have you. Wear a blazer and carry a can of pepper spray in your pocket. Tell someone where you're going, you always have that backup. Make a plan to call your office friend and be that person for someone else too. Check your cell phone strength and signal. Make sure you have signal where you are. Be sure to have emergency numbers programmed on speed dial. When working in open house, try to have at least one other person work with you. It could even be a lender or someone. Upon entering the house for the first time, check all routes and determine several escape routes. Make sure if you're if you were to escape by the back door, you could also escape to the backyard. There's not a fence or something. Avoid attics, basements, and small rooms. Let the per let your clients go ahead of you instead of you going where you'd be pushed down and locked in someplace. Mm -hmm. um, have all open house visitors sign in. Ask for their full names, address, phone number, and email. Ask to see their driver's license if you feel concerned. If someone comes to your open house that you question or have an uneasy feeling about, step out into the yard and allow them to tour the home on their own. Always walk behind them, as I mentioned. And don't assume that everyone has left the premises at the end of the open house. Check to make sure all the rooms and backyard are uh, big. So I have a funny story. I was showing a property in Clintonville. It was a vacant property and it was my listing. And I knew it was a man and he was insistent on coming here. He didn't want to come to the office. So I told my buddy in the, in the office at the time, which was actually Steve Springer. We shared an office at that time. And I said, hey, I want to be at this property. It's vacant. It's with a male, and I don't know them. They didn't come in. And I said, if you don't hear from me in 20 minutes, call police. And I gave him the address. So I get there, and it was actually two gay guys, and they were so much fun. And we were laughing and having the best time, and the house forgot to call him <laughs> or text him. And I'm pretty soon I'm getting my phone with everyone. Are you okay? I'm sending you bucks. I'm like, oh, no, 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 I'm okay. I'm okay. <laughs> but it's a good idea to always have somebody. The next page, on page 30, you should have seen this previously. This is your passport <coughs> process. Tab this page, your market, whatever. Everything on this page is what you should be doing as you're ramping up your business to get a good foundation. And that takes us into the business thing where we're going to spend the next little bit here. <laughs> How many of you have heard of the Millionaire Real Estate Agent book? You should have a copy. When you came in to read, meet with us at the Rate 3, we should have given you a copy. If you don't have one, get one from us. It's been on the New York Times bestseller list for over 20 years. I think 2002 is when it was written. Well, what we're going to talk about 
that I call it the real estate Bible because it's basically the book that has all of the systems, the models. If you follow them, you're going to be successful no matter what. Then the sequel to that book was called The Shift Book, and those are sales tactics. What we're going to do is I'm going to simplify the MREA book, the Millionaire Real Estate Agent book, with you tonight by doing our business plan. And this is something that you're going to do on your own as time goes on. We're going to do a generic one together. So if I can get one from here. Has everybody logged into mykw.kw.com? Yes. yes. You mean ever or right now? Ever. <laughs> and this is what your page looks like, except for it has your picture over here, not mine. So, we can't see it. Oh, I didn't think Rachel did. Um, turn the lights off. Huh? Turn the lights off. Right. We'll turn the front light off. We'll give that a second to warm up. And I'll finish the pizza. <laughs> How's your pizza? Yeah, I haven't had Papa John's pizza in forever, right? Like years. <laughs> Maybe I need to bottle of water and go up front and grab one. It's oh, so funny. I thought I was going to say bottle of wine. I literally was like, <laughs> hey, what is those feeding? <laughs> <laughs> <Hey. laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> okay. Everybody recognize the screen? Everything up here, the black line, is a Keller Williams International Resource. When you come down here to the bottom, if you go to where it says MyKW Market Center 379 Intranet, that is everything that is a resource just for our office. That's how you get to the training calendar, documents if you need a W-9 for a referral. Um, what what is it? What is an induced? <laughs> There's just tons of information in here. We're gonna go up here to Market Center. Mm -hmm. And we're going to go to the documents. It's also where you schedule a conference room at any of our locations because there's a resource staff. And where we're going to spend our time, I, I recommend just going in here and looking through stuff. There's just lots of things up out here that will help you. We're going to go to business planning. And I have a pre done business plan here. And I'm going to show you how this tool works. And explain the four models as we go. Has everybody used Excel before at some point? It's an Excel spreadsheet, so it's pretty simple. Once it opens up. <laughs> I usually don't pull it up ahead of time just because I want you to see how to get to it. So I'm sorry for taking this just a minute here. There we go. So the first thing you have to do is you have to enable editing, but this is a working worksheet that when you make changes and updates. So if you look across the bottom here, we've got the different Excel, Excel cells. 
The first of which is just a cover page. So we're going to put the right here. <laughs> Yeah. I did that once. Oh, okay. okay. Now we're ready to roll. So I'll type in the year. And then when I do this with you, I usually put your name on it so that we know whose business plan it is. So this is Toby Dela's business plan. <clears throat> Uh, we don't even have big business plan because it says over the top. And then we're ready to rock and roll. The first model is the lead generation model. And we're going to, like I said, talk a lot about lead generation today. <laughs> so, how many of you have ever heard that people talk about you should do three hours a day of lead generation? Well, sometimes it's like, what does that really mean? Can you see that about that size? Yeah. Okay. So three hours of lead generation is simple to break down this way. Hour one hour two and hour three. Hour one is who and what. Who are you going to contact and what are you going to say to them or talk what to talk to them about when you contact? Hour two is make contact. Hour three is follow up. So the reason why I say this is you are the most efficient when you make a list of the people you're going to contact. And if you know with your business plan you need to make 10 contacts a day, then that's 10 people's names, their phone numbers, if you're going to call them or text them, write a note, whatever you're going to do. Hour two is actually make the contact. Pick up the phone. Hi, Vaughn, this is Dayla. How are you? Just wanted to check in on you. I hadn't talked to you for a while. What's going on in your world? They're probably going to ask you. Well, you know what? I'm actually calling today, too, to remind you that I'm in the real estate business. And if you know somebody thinking about buying, selling, or investing in real estate, I would love to, to help them out. You know, it's a crazy market. We're looking for listings right now. We're at, we have an inventory shortage. Whatever it is you're going to say. Then when you're done, you hang up from Fawn, and then you're going to call Eric. Hi, Eric. It's Dayla. Tell me, how are you? Same conversation. So maybe when I was on the phone with Fawn, she said, you know what? I'm going to buy an investment property. I'd like to start looking around. I'm going to make the note of what she said. I'd be happy to start you on a search fund. That way you can look at property. What area of town and get that information. Then I talked to Eric and Eric said, oh, my sister, Jill, she's going to be selling her house to me. And I would like for you to reach out to her. That'd be great. Then I get Jill's information. Then I talked to PJ and PJ says, well, you know what? I want to buy next year. So I want to make a note. He wants to buy a house next year. Oh, and by the way, I'm going to have knee surgery in November as we're talking. Make the note. He's going to have knee surgery. Then I get to hour three, and that's the follow-up. I'm going to set songs for to search up. I'm going to call Eric's sister, Jill. I'm going to make a note on my pipeline that I'm PJ wants to buy next year. I'm not going to wait till that minute, last minute, to contact him. I'm going to contact him a few times in between. But I'm also going to make note that he's having surgery in a month. I'm going to get him a Get Well card ready. And I'm going to put a note where the stamp goes that says mail on whatever date. So it's ready to go. That's my follow-up. The reason you don't want to, as soon as you get off the phone, set up the search, call Jill, write the note is an hour has passed. And guess what? You didn't get through your contacts. I didn't have all of your time. I'm gonna have you guys do a quick little exercise. Take a piece of paper, take just a scrap piece, a napkin, anything. And I want you to put eight dashes on it. Here's my marker. Like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then below it, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I don't want you to do anything until I tell you to do something. Now, I'm going to time you, so that's why I want you to do it all at the same time. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> and what I'm going to have you do, because everybody got a piece of paper, you can use even um, the back side of day one in, in your in, in the uh, second page in. You can use the back side of that if you want to. So that would fold it in half because we're going to do something with the other half. Is everybody ready? All right. When I say go, but not until, I'm going to have you fill in the first line with your A, B, Cs. And the second line with your numbers. One, two, three. And I'm going to time how quickly you are doing. But don't go yet. On your mark, get set, go. Look up when you're done. Okay. Now, I want you to flip your paper over. I want you to do eight dashes and eight dashes again. I'm going to have you do the same thing, but this time I want you to do A and then the number one, B and the number two, but not until I tell you to go. Oh. Okay, on your mark, get set, go. Look up when you're done. A little bit longer, didn't it? When our brain is switching gears all the time, we are less efficient in what we do. Mm -hmm. That's why this is an exercise right out of the book called The One Thing that Gary Keller and Jay Papasan wrote. We do one thing at a time. The list person, 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 phone number. Practice your script, practice your script, practice your script, practice, practice your script, or whatever you're going to say, conversation. Make contact. Hi, Vaughn. Hi, Eric. Hi, Nathy. Hi, CJ. Hi, Lou. Get done. Make your notes, make your notes, make your notes. Hour three, go do all the follow up stuff that's all over the place. Because what will happen otherwise is you'll get caught up in this and you'll never get back to that. And you'll never get your contacts made. And you'll never reach your goals and you'll never get your numbers. Does that make sense? I know that seems like a simple exercise, but I, it really does resonate. Yeah, that's really good. <clears throat> now, back to what we're doing. We talked about three hours of the day. So everything in here is based on three hours of lead generation, and we talked about what that looks like. Everything on here that's in red, if you change that number, it will recalculate everything for you. So how many transactions do you want to do this year? Do you want to do 24? Do you want to do 12? Whatever that number. And we know that if we can change it, and as we change it, it'll recalculate. So if you get to the end of your business plan and go, ooh, that's not enough money for me to quit my full-time job, then we'll adjust it. So I'm going to go ahead, just for our purposes here, I'm going to put that we're going to do 12 transactions is going to be our goal for this year. The next thing we have to decide what percentage of our business is going to come from listings versus buyers. How many buyer appointments, Stacey, you've been in the business the longest in the room? How many buyer appointments could you go on in a day? How many buyer appointments? You mean like showings or do you mean? How many buyers could you work with in a day? I think I've got up to like seven, probably. How many listing appointments could you go on in a day? I think mentally I can handle like three. Now, see, it's usually the opposite. Yeah. Buyers take you a lot longer to work with because you've got to figure out what you're going to look at. You've got to schedule the showings. You have to drive between the showings, physically go through all the properties, find out their follow-up with each one. Whereas a listing appointment takes you about an hour to prepare for it an hour to give the presentation. So 
typically you can work with more listing more sellers in a day uh, go on listing appointments than the number of buyers I, I would say you could probably go on four maybe five listing appointments if you were super aggressive about it buyers if you're driving them around everywhere and so forth you know one two maybe three i mean seven in a day would be pretty aggressive you don't make money looking for a windshield. What was that? You don't make money looking for a windshield. <laughs> but most of us are geared to work with buyers right now. <laughs> and, but, but you didn't say it's going to last for this. Yeah, no, I understand that. I'm saying that maybe it seems to us that we can do buyers quickly. Because... But, and that's because there's no inventory. So you're only showing them one well, property. Well, I'll do it like, yeah. it's like 15 minutes to walk their house. So I'll, I'll schedule, you know. I used to schedule four in an hour. Yeah. I mean, there's definitely been days I've met seven different groups of people out. The same neighborhood? Not necessarily. If they're far apart, then you have to allow more time. So, and you have some buyers that take a long time to go through. Yeah, that's what my main experience has been so far. So, and I would overlap them too, the four in the hour. So, if I was doing eight properties, which most people, there's not eight properties to show one buyer right now. But back in the day, I would do, you know, four and from one to two. And then, and the way I'd schedule was the first one's from one to two, the second one's from 115 to 215, the third one's from 230 to 330, the next one's from 245 to 345. So that I'm staggering them a little bit. Um, but no more than four in an hour, certainly. And if, you, if they're further apart, like I said, longer. <clears throat> the one, the other reason why listings are so important is listings do a few things for you. Any ideas what they are besides it's a listing? Well, it generates it buyers. It generates buyers. It generates buyers. What else? Get your name out there. Guaranteed Get your name out there. Your branding. Guaranteed paycheck. Almost. Almost. Right now, for yeah, yeah. almost guaranteed paycheck. You do open houses and get more leads. Do open houses get more leads. Somebody else, the nine times out of ten, is going to bring the buyer to you too and do that side of the work too, right? Mm -hmm. So you need listings, and that should always be where you focus your goals. Buyers come with listings. And for every listing you have, you should get two more transactions out. Because <coughs> it's a lead generating tool, makes your phone ring, makes people come to your open house. So the next, so we've got to decide what percentage of our Business will come from listings, what percentage from buyers? The MREA book says it should be 50 50. When I was selling, I had young triplets that were involved in everything and I needed to leverage my time. So I focused more on listings and then just let the buyers come. So I, mine was more like 70 30, 70% 70 listings, 30% buyers. But MREA tells us 50 50. So the next piece that we need to look at is what's our average sale price? Well, you may not have one because you, you're brand new to the business. Our average sale price for the office is $322,000. You can use that. Or if you know you're working in a certain area, like some of you might be working in Granville or Lancaster or whatever, you might want to look because it might be a little different there than it is where we're sitting right now for the whole office. So let's put on the listing side that our average sale price is $322,000. And let's put their average buyer to maybe more a lot of first time home buyers too. It only is you know two twenty. But again, it's not twenty two thousand. <laughs> <laughs> now, I don't ever recommend you reduce your commission because you work hard for your money. But if you do on a regular basis, maybe if you have the listing and you get the buyer side, you might reduce your commission from time to time. If you do that a fair amount, you might want to adjust this down because this is based on 3%. So what you should do is say, yeah, I do adjust my commission. So I'm going to put my average commission only like 8,000 as a result. We're not going to do that. Thank you. So based on this, it says that we need to go on 10.7, boys round up 11 listing appointments this year. That's one a month. Of those, we will convert 75% of them or take eight listings. That's one a month or 0.7 a month. Of those, the conversion rates, you recognize these from today, guys? The conversion rate is 
of the listings you take, you'll sell 75% of them. Like Eric said, it's more guaranteed right now than that. So it might be more like 85, maybe 90%. But to be conservative, we'll say 75. That means we'll sell six listings this year. That's 0.5 a month. We're going to round up again to one. An average sale price of 322, average commission. The gross commission for the year for just listings would be 55,200, and gross commission from listings per month would be 4,600. If we come over to the buy side, same number of appointments. As we come down here, again, six. So obviously, if we're doing 12 and we're doing one a month, it's going to be either a listing or a buyer. But we know we have to close at least one per month to hit our goal. On our buyers, our average sale price was lower. So as you can see down here, the gross commission from the buyer side is lower. But if we sell one property a month, our gross commission for the year would be $94,800. That's $7,900 a month. Does that sound good? Does that, is that doable, one per month? I'd say so. All right, let's go on to the next model, which is, I'm sorry, we were in the economic model. I, I said lead generation already. Now we're going to go into the lead generation model. Again, everything based on three hours a day of lead generation. Now we're going to talk about METs and habitats. How many of you have contacts in your database right now and set up on a smartphone? Awesome. How many of you are going to have it done within the next three weeks? I should see every hand in this room up. I'm telling you what, guys, if you don't hear me say anything else, get your contacts in your database, get them set up on a smartphone. You want their name, their phone number, their email address, and their mailing address. In addition to that smart plan, we have something called Neighborhood Nurture. And every month they get a snapshot of what's going on in their neighborhood. That's the easiest thing that you can use. If you get a brand new lead in, even if it's a Facebook lead, you've never talked to them, Set them up on a neighborhood nurture. Get their, make sure you get their address. Because again, that's a great way to touch them. Every two weeks or once a month, whatever you set it up for, they're going to get a snapshot of in your neighborhood. There are this many properties and this is the average sale price. Again, creating curiosity and as a touch. <clears throat> I keep putting my marker down and losing it. There we go. And I can't see in the dark. <clears throat> so we're going to talk about METs. versus habitats. <clears throat> if you look here, somebody that you've met before that you've had in your database, for every 12 of them, you should get two transactions per year. Comes right out of the millionaire real estate agent. This ratio is eight to two. I'm sorry, 12 to two. Oh, People you've never met before that you're trying to get business from, like a farm where you're mailing something once a month. The ratio is for every 50, you get one transaction per year. Are any of you better? Do you like to go to the track or casino? Which odds do you like better? Not best. 12 to 2 all day long, baby. Your database is your goal. <laughs> so today I'm out and I just meet Bella for the first time. And we have a conversation. I get her contact information. I come back and I put her in my database and I set her up on a smart plan. She is now a MET. So when, what we do with a MET is we put them on an eight by eight the first day we meet them. That means they get touched once per week for eight weeks. So we met today. Next week, Bellin gets a text from me. It was so nice meeting you last week at Susie's party. The next week, she gets a handwritten card from me saying, um, hey, I'm um, uh, you know, happy fall. The next week, I call her. Hey, Bella, just wanted to touch base. It was so nice meeting you. I wonder if you want to have coffee sometime or whatever. Maybe we get together. Then the next week, she might get an email from you or my newsletter or whatever I'm putting out. If she hears from me once a week for eight weeks, do you think at the end of that eight weeks she's gonna remember who I am? Yeah, I hope so. So it's imprinting on her who I am and building that relationship. 
Then the next thing you do is you put them on a 36 touch. It says 33 up there because they changed it. They added three touches to it. And a 36 touch lasts for one year. And that's so there's a smart plan for that. There's lots of thousands of smart plans for that. You could just pay attention and realize when the eight by eight ends, just put them on the next one. When your smart plan comes to an end, it'll alert you and then you'll start them on the next smart plan. Do you have to make a follow up for them or does it automatically alert you? Like, when the smart plan comes to an end, it'll say the smart plan has come to an end. Oh, what do you mean? You get alert. So then you put them on the 36 touch. And so all throughout the year, they're getting all kinds of your newsletter, your neighborhood nurture, your, you send them your mobile app, you get all these kinds of things. Then what MREA says, when that's done, you put them on a 12 direct, which is once per month. That's according to Gary Keller and MREA. I personally would, I like to just restart the 36 touch and keep them on that. That's my preference. It's not what MREA says. <laughs> okay. Now let's talk about the habit nuts. That's like a farm. That could, and it doesn't have to be just geographical. It could be a farm like your golf league or your race car enthusiast group or your gym buddies or the teachers and your teacher's lounge that you sit with every day or you know, whatever that might be. And so you send them something once a month and it's talking about real estate business. If it is a geographical farm, one of the easy things to send them are market stats. I mean, I'm a, I'm a firm believer that, you know, there's some people like to send recipes and all kinds of things. Well, you're not Betty Crocker. You're not promoting a cooking business. So instead, why not send them market stats? So do any of you live in a subdivision? Easy place to do it. Pick your subdivision. People know you, see you, already, you know, have a relationship with you in some places. Perception is reality in this business. So let's say you're in that neighborhood and let's say you can you get a listing. And maybe if you can get two, guess what? All of a sudden it looks like you own the neighborhood because you're doing open houses. They're getting stuff from you every week. Maybe you're gonna sponsor their neighborhood garage sale. And we've got tactics around that. Maybe you're gonna have an Easter egg hunt at Easter time or a pumpkin giveaway or whatever the case may be. Perception's reality. That might be the only two listings you've ever had, but they're right there together. So that's always a good thing, too. Those of you who have kids, your kids are a gold mine. <laughs> when my kids were in school, they used to come out with a directory every year that had all the parents' names, numbers, emails, and everything printed. Yes. I would pay somebody to type it and put it in my database. Wow. <laughs> really? I called it the Indian Friends Farm. Um, their soccer teams when they would you know have when soccer would start up and you get the parent roster for the snack program and all that stuff put it in my database kids are gold mines so on the 12 direct or on the 50 to one i mean the habit mess it's a 12 direct always and forever because guess what if they call you and you work at somebody else and you get that 50 to one at that point then they become a mess they move over here does that make sense well, I do have a question. It might be a stupid one. No, but there's no stupid question. <laughs> Are you allowed to do that though? Because I'm just thinking, because my son just started preschool and they asked us and they sent everybody an email about the parent roster where your name, your phone number, and information. Um, so I'm just like, am I allowed to, you know, send them out information? Is there a roster police? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes, yeah. yes. I mean, if it says, you might have to listen to a group. That's one thing that's that. Okay. But I never had that. Okay. Good shoot. Okay. And I just did it. <laughs> ask for forgiveness, please. Yeah. I always ask for permission. Yeah. Yeah. Forgiveness, not permission. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Now, the do not, there is a do not call list, and that's a real thing, and you do want to adhere to that. Okay. But there's not a do not mail list. <laughs> okay. You can mail to anybody you've never been. That was no. They don't have, they don't know how you've got their address. You, know, you could have drove around that neighborhood. But I could do that. I can drive and just question me about what if you only it. have their name and email? You know, what what type of campaign could we run for people that would be there? To have all kinds of smart plans for just the email and phone number, mm -hmm. really. But you want to get the, here's the reason why you want to get their address 
then you can send them the neighborhood nurture. Right, but if you're going off the parent roster, like she was saying, it's but as long as you're exposing yourself immediately, like, hey, I'm collecting your email. But you you can go to the auditor's website because you know where the team is, right? So say it's in Franklin County, go to the Franklin County auditor's website mm -hmm. and put in the name. Yeah. And then if it's not in that county, search Del like whatever's the next county. Mm -hmm. So whether it's Fairfield, Del you know what? I use the auditor's website to look for. I stalk people all I the time. Saw, all I've done is that's all I've done in two months is literally stalk. When I'm doing my Christmas card list, everything. I always look go to the auditor's website. I never ask like even if they're in my sphere and I have to send them something for whatever reason. I never ask them to look that. Huh. Yeah, you can because I'm like, why would I waste time asking someone? It's <laughs> my fingertips. Now talking about a farm too. Let's say you're going to do a neighborhood. There's a couple places where you can go to get all those names and addresses because with those you're not going to have email addresses that's why you've got to do right. 12 direct mailing and or door knock around it so um you can pull that off of realist yourself and dump it down into command or i recommend you talk to your title partner because they have the ability to pull it out on a csv file and give it to you to dump into your command and then ask them if they'll also partner with you and co-brand and whatever you're mailing out and share the cost of either the printing or the postage or, or whatever the case may be. Can you say that again? So if I partner with a title company, they can do a search of my neighborhood and then give me a list of people who live sure in the homes? Yes. So thank you for repeating yes. that. A lot of title companies even have the ability to pull things based on demographics. Uh, for instance, I was selling a horse farm once. So I had them pull a list based on everybody who subscribed to the a horse magazine mm -hmm. in that county and the surrounding counties. And then I sent them a mailer about this horse farm. I also went to the Little Brown Jeff horse race and I put a flyer in everybody's windshield that was there that day. That's you, your, title That's company, your title company did that about the about the magazine? Yep. We'll talk to Same thing, golf communities. She's very well about it. Also, demographics based on you know in certain incomes or people that are like if, if maybe a con. I ended up being the condo queen for this neighborhood that was mostly empty nesters, not because I tried, but it's because I got a listing in there, and then I maximized that effort, and I got another listing in there, and then I got a third listing in there, and I became the condo queen of this one neighborhood, and so then I started trying to target downsizers, so people that were fifty and above, and a certain income level. To, you know, to try to target to market, and that's target marketing. You just want to use that company, like, yeah, oh, I want this, and then they're like, here's, yep. You can even go in and have them do a search if you want to know people that have been in their homes 20 years, ownership 20 years, mm -hmm. or 30 years, or something like that. Yeah, very descriptive as to what you're looking for. That's for awesome. Yes, yes. Eric's oh. sister Jill showed up that's getting ready to sell her house. <laughs> Are you <laughs> <using it>? <laughs> <laughs> okay? Back to our business. So the next decision you have to make is what percentage of your business is going to come from people you know versus what percentage from people you don't know. I was always very heavy on my sphere. That's why I say work your sphere, work your sphere, work your sphere. So I've got 85% here. That might be high for you guys. So let's back it off. Let's say 60% is going to come from our sphere and 40% from our farm. So based on that, for 60% to achieve our goals, I only need 43.2 people in my database to do that. My guess is you guys have more than that phone you can pick out. Yeah. If we change this percentage to be 75%, it's 54. To do 12 transactions in a year, you only need to really focus on 54 people. That so, should be some. Is that based off that three hours? Yeah. So there's a, that, that's, um, you could triple that if you're actually committed to three hours. Absolutely. Because what, what you're looking at right there, that's one hour prospect. That is one hour to make a phone call. That's not three hours. And you could, you could easily pick this. I mean, or, or maybe whatever you want, depending on how committed you are to it. Like how many reps do you want to get in? That's right. 
I mean, it's not it's not overly complicated. It's, it's, it's literally phone calls, appointments, and paperwork. That's oh, literally all this did. Okay, those of you in bold, what were the what's the what's your job description? Lead generate. Lead generate. Lead follow up. up. Go on appointments. Negotiate contracts. Strict practice and role play. Yep. That's your job description. That's it. Real estate simple. It's not easy. Right. Well, it's, it's simple, but the hard part is just being consistent. Ta da! That's called accountability. Yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> You're right. You're right. Farming out all the stuff you don't want to do. <laughs> oh my gosh! Could you come teach this class with me? That's yeah, exactly what you're right. through, though. You've got you, you could like okay. the only reason I'm still not off the ground is because I haven't like I have too much shit to make phone calls three hours a day. Mm -hmm. Like literally. If I could commit to just making phone calls, and I've tried this because I have a day job, it doesn't matter. Like your best time is between 11 and 1 and 4 and 6. If you make phone calls every day between that time, you are gonna make gold. So let's talk about leverage. Leverage are your systems. So command is leverage. Leverage is also people. So we have Levop. Levop will do all of your Facebook posts for you if you want to. They'll design your logo where uh, logo um, logo. Yes. They will um, do your mailings for you if you want to. So there's leverage right there. <laughs> you can even hire a cyber backer, right, Jill? Yeah. And they'll make phone calls for you and set those appointments. Yeah, there's, say, yeah. there's leverage at everything. So you're right. The things that you're either you don't like to do or don't want to do, there's a way to do them and still get this done and still make a boatload of money doing it. Just gotta find the time to make a phone call. Mm -hmm. Your cyber backer could make those phone calls mm -hmm. for you. Dana, do you think 75% is realistic on the men people? Okay. Mine was only more than 80. Okay. So yes, I do. Okay. Now, let's say maybe you just moved to Columbus. Maybe you don't know that many people. And if that's the case, then you're going to want to adjust those. Get on a dialer. And you can have a free dialer right here with us. Rapid Mortgage Provider, the Mojo Dialer. You guys can get a hold of Josh Pankowitz. He'll write his number on the board. And Josh will train you to use it. He'll help you use it. He'll coach you through using it. And once you're trained, you can do it on your own. I have no idea what that is. It's like it is a dial. They all call three people at a time, and then it goes through their voice and they put up a message. Every one of these calls, if you answer one, it stops the right. So you can call it an hour. Fine, and then once you make that phone call, you can start to call it. So you can do it. I do have a phone call. Wow. That's what I've heard. Like, they write in the line. You can do it. You can even dump your spirit in the pool without a command and you have to call your spirit. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so let's talk about the dialogue. You're right. It will dial up to three people at a time. The first person that answers is in your ear. You have a headset on. And our agents have had great luck getting listing appointments out of it because the script is simple. Hi, this is Dale with Keller Williams Perry, Columbus. I'm calling because I have a buyer that's looking for a property in your area. Who do you know that's thinking about selling? If they don't know any, thank you. If you think someone, here's my number. Boom, the next person's in your ear. You can do very effective lead generation and even do more than that in three hours time. Also, you pre-record a message, and if you get someone's voicemail, it automatically leaves them a message. So to, to start using this, contact Josh Pankowitz. Here's his phone number with Rapid, and you can use it for free. All right, let's go back to our business plan here. So we know based on what we put in here, we need 54 in our database to reach our goals with METs, and we need 150 in our habit METs. So we need a farm of 150. We need to find a neighborhood of 150 homes. So how many do we currently have in our database? Let's put that we have three in our database, right? We we'll put three people in, that's all we've done. It's gonna show us over the next four weeks, we need to get 51 in there right away. So over the next four weeks, that's 13 people per week. We need to add our database. Out of our phone. At the same time, it's a great time to call. So if you have their name and their phone number in your phone, but you don't have their mailing address, look it up on the auditor site, or you can call them and say, hey, I just wanted to let you know I've got a great uh, 
tool, I'd like to send you stats on what's going on in your neighborhood. It's okay if I you know, email you some information every month about the real estate in your neighborhood. Oh, sure, that's great. Is your current mailing address still blah, blah, blah? Or, or can you tell me what your current mailing address is? Now, if you sold them their home, you don't know their mailing address. That's a different story. <laughs> So then we don't want to stop growing. Remember how I told you I leveled out at 6 million and had a hard time getting over the hump? We need to add to our database all the time. So over the course of the next year, after we do this initial dump in there, we need to add 76 people for the rest of the year. And this actually is telling us to do it over six months at 13 or three per week. You meet three people everywhere, every single week. Whoever rings you out the grocery store, who cuts your hair, who works on your car, whatever the case. So now I'll go back to what I wrote over there the eight by eight, the 36 touch, and the 12 direct. That's what this next section represents. Eight touches. Well, it doesn't cost anything because they're we have their email address. 33 touches doesn't cost anything. Now let's go over to our habit of mats. We know we need 150 people in that neighborhood or two neighborhoods or that school roster or whatever church directory, whatever it is we're gonna use. So we need 150, how many do we currently have? Well, we have none. So we need to get 150 right away. Over the next four weeks, that's 38. Well, guess what? Go to your title company, get them on one belt, put them in and you're done. So work smart. Over the rest of the year, we don't have to add anybody. We just have to keep on those same 150 people all year long. 12 direct, they cost a mail. And I'm going to up this to 60 cents per mail. Even if your uh, title company or somebody is helping you with it, it's still going to, there's still going to be some cost for you. That's 1,080 bucks for a year. All right. Everybody good? Let's go to the budget model. Let's pull it all together. Do 12 transactions in a year, average commission. Gross commission for the year would be $94,800. That's before expenses. Then we've got our cost of sales. Well, you've got your cap with the company and your franchise cap, and that's built in. If you're on a team, then you know, your, team, your cap would be a little different. When we look at this column down here, it says that this column should not exceed this percent of our gross commissions. So like salaries, if we're going to hire somebody to do stuff for us, it should not exceed zero percent in this case but let's say you are going to hire let's say that you know pj you know i can't do anything till next year because my mba but i could go on appointments and you hire somebody let's say you're going to spend a thousand bucks a month hiring somebody and make calls and set appointments for you this is where you would put it in so your year a thousand bucks a month would be twelve thousand a year right and it'll automatically add that in there for us most of you aren't going to have any salaries right now but if you are, that's where you would put it. <clears throat> the next is our lead generation expense should not exceed 2938 bucks a year. Well, lead generation includes lots of things. It could include having client parties. That's a great way to lead generate. How many of us are social? Doing a stretch class and invite people and get some Keller Williams leggings and t-shirts okay. and hand out water bottles branded with your stuff stickered on it. This is off the subject, but where do we get that brand stuff? <laughs> I asked Rachel and she said a lucky dog place, and I can't get them to return my calls or right. emails or text. Or really? Voice He's yeah. my local guy. And then it's called, it's either the red store or my red store. Google Keller Williams Apparel, it'll pop up. Okay. <laughs> lucky dog doesn't do everything either. He does t shirts and I mean, he does a lot, but maybe I should have you call him. Yeah, he's doing some stuff for me right now. Literally, I've called for like two weeks straight. Ooh. I want to get the right I've, number. I've gone on their website. I've left voicemail. I want to get the right number. I'll give you the get with me on that. Well, it says Lucky Dog on the voicemail. But yeah. I have a cell. Yeah. Okay. I maybe don't have a cell. <laughs> <laughs> but lead generation includes all those things. So you want to incorporate that in. It can include, so I told you I'd tell you the example that I gave earlier. One year, my kids' baseball team needed a sponsor. It was 250 bucks. And you got a sign with promise that was tied to the fence, or, you know, tied to the fence, however you want to say it, wired to the fence. All, the, my logo was on all the kids' shirts with my information under it and the brokerage information. I would go to the games. I would wear either my name tag if I'm showing houses or logo wear, because I had 
t-shirts, sweatshirts, rain jackets, umbrellas, you name it. And I still have a lot of Halloween's logo there. And I would wear it. So people knew what I did. I didn't have to say, hey, you know, real estate. Did you go to one of my house? You know, I didn't have to do that. So all these cute little kids running around with my shirts on. They go to Dairy Queen afterwards. They go to Beach Plays or whatever the case may be. Sitting in the stands. I took my turn working at a concession stand. Talking to people. Yeah. They ask questions. That one baseball season, I met a builder who had five spec stores. I listed all five of those properties. I sold three of those properties. I also got a buyer that didn't have one, didn't have an agent to sell their house to buy that property, which was in Worthington. It was a four hundred fifty thousand dollar listing. And back then, that was a really expensive listing. So right there's four properties, and then two other people that just were traditional listers. For one $250 baseball sponsorship and showing up at my kids' game, watching them play baseball, wearing a color shirt. Was that your first year doing that? Or had you done it previously? No, that was my first year doing really? the sponsorship. Yep. I I sponsored it because I know uh, I'm an assistant coach for wrestling in Mechanicsburg. I like throw them some money and they put my logo on the back of the shirt with a lot of different. Do you show up wearing stuff on your shirt? You no, know, that's that's what I had. That, that is what I'm saying is that I didn't, don't think I capitalized on it as well as I could have. And you're busy with the kids there where I, I was sitting in the bleachers. Uh -huh. But but still, you know. I thought it was a good exposure. It absolutely it is. Take something that you're going to give out. What you know, Whatever the parents are, are they using koozies or yeah. you know something like that that they could take home with them now at my gym i put they have like a, a video screen and i put an ad on that and i get a lot of conversation started from that because i'm in there wear keller williams workout gear get tech talks with keller williams you know, that kind of stuff too leggings <laughs> sure <laughs> you know there was a lady there was a lady that she hated lead generation she hated picking up the phone really all she wanted to do in life she played tennis at the country club so she had a maths coach with Keller Williams, and he challenged her. He said, you can lead generate any way you want. So he said, you have to, you can go to the club and you can play tennis, but you need to join a league that you've never been in before. You need to wear your Keller Williams clothing and take water bottles with your, with a sticker with your information on it. So she met all of these new people to grow, continue to grow her sphere and join the tennis league. They knew what she did. Then the next year, she loved it so much, she had joined a different one. And then a different one. And she would add what she would give them. She gave them tennis towels. She gave them, you know, things like that. Balls with her information on it. So she did what she loved, which is play tennis every day. Every day, five days a week. She ended up joining all these leagues five days a week. And that's where her business started coming from. One of our agents, uh, Sarah Marty, she spent the summer at the pool with her kids this summer, and that's where her business came from. Yeah. Have to take what you do and find a way to capitalize on it as a subtle note. Jill, we had a, uh, our kids, um, we're very blessed that they're very athletic. So it helps when we have big kids on the team because we can then automatically know who are good. Um, we had some, uh, it was a church league, it was a dodgeball league that uh, people had come to our kids and said, hey, we would really, because it had, you had to have COVID, right? So then you had some of these guy teams that were really good. They, they wanted to have girls that were actually good and not a detriment to the team. You know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. So they came and I said, hey, I said, I could do shirts. So, so I created these shirts and had a made and on the back, Everybody had numbers, but everybody's name was my name. So it's like, you know how when you have a jersey, like in kids, it's like Jill Campbell. And then I walked in and my shirt said, I'm Jill on it. So <laughs> there was no question as to, okay, well, who's Jill? <laughs> Make it fun. Yeah, they were dodgeball. You know, one of the things they talked about bold today is doing a reverse bold 100. So use social media, put things out there like um, a getaway at Hawking Hills for the fall uh, or $800 if you call me today. So you, you may not have time to call everybody, but if you have a break and you know you can accept calls from five to seven at night, so you call me between five and seven to register to win. 
Now you have to have certain speech states language and come to me and I'll help you with that. And then they call you. So you're not even making calls. People are calling you based on what you put on social media. Mm -hmm. And we're going to work on that in the office. We're going to do a class around this. Yeah, so. I was going to say, how do you do that? Oh. <laughs> I think something I took away today from Bold, I might have been last week, I've been thinking about a lot, was being purposeful. Mm -hmm. Everything that you do has to have a purpose. So it's not enough sometimes just to make the stuff because you feel like that's the stuff you have to make. You have to do it with a good attitude. You have to have it with a smile on your face. And you have to you have to like go above and beyond. It's not enough to just check it and say, "Well, I did that thing and it didn't work." You have to do it with purpose. You know what? I I've told my kids this. I've told agents this. Real estate it's not a job. It's a way of life. You live it every day. So I can guarantee you, if we went to a restaurant right now and we're having a conversation sitting across the table, and there's a real estate conversation going on over here. My ear would pick up on. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And then at that point, I'd be back when I was still selling, Steve Springer and I worked together, and we'd be at lunch, and I'd be like, we'd go, oh, God, she's going to say something. <laughs> yeah, because that's the way, it, and it becomes a way of life and everywhere you go. And so when people, I, I still get called. I don't, I haven't actively sold it in 14 years. I still get calls. People, hey, I know you're in real estate. Okay, the next one is occupancy. If you are leasing an office, obviously that's where you would put that in, but you guys, if you're not, it's your $63.50 per month. Oops. So that's $762 a year. Technology. Well, you're paying for your mortgages, that's $1,150. Are you paying for any other technology? You are, you have to. If not, and we'll just put 1200 in there and we're just going to cover our mortgages. And then your phone, your phone's not 100% of real estate expense, but it is, it's also a, it's a business and a personal. Supplies, paper clips, ink for your printer, toner, uh, folders, you name it. You can adjust any of these. Education, we're leaving that amount in there because you're going to go to Mega Camp or you're going to go to Family Reunion, right? But in terms of California in February, equipment, that sign, lock boxes. Um, if you're in the mentoring program, signs and lock boxes are provided for you now. But here's what I recommend is take a piece of each clothing and set it aside so that you, as you need your own inventory as time goes on, you have that money set aside to put back into your business. Auto insurance. So your total expenses for the year. It's going to be eleven thousand sixty-two dollars and eighty cents. If you're on a team and you're looking at hiring somebody, or maybe you're going to do transaction to close, or or you're going to do um, an ISA, you would put that in here because you're going to hire that person to be here. This next blank, the budget amount minus the total cost for marketing action plans. So our budget amount for lead generation is twenty-nine eighty-three. I'm sorry, 293880. See at the top there? And then we're going to go back to the previous page and take that amount we're going to do in our 12 direct. We're going to subtract out 1080. So that the number we're going to insert here is 1858. And that way it won't double count that. Now, let's say you're going to add strategies throughout the year. Maybe you're just getting started and you don't have the money yet to do it. Maybe you're going to do a client event. Oops. A client wine and cheese event. Because you have a charcuterie business on the side. What's the cost going to be? Well, Fawn says it's going to be a thousand dollars, but you're going to have so many people. What's the start date? Well, I'm going to do it in November. And what am I going to hold it accountable to make sure it works for me? Well, I'm, by the time I do my follow-ups and everything, by February 1st, I'm going to hold it accountable. And then another one might be, I'm going to do my stretch class for with my spear. 
What's it going to cost me? Well, I'm free. I might have to have a facility. Oh, but I could use the training room here for free on a Saturday. Um, I'll provide refreshments. Oh, what's that going to cost me? Oh, $100. And what am I going to do? It? Well, I'm going to get busy on that right now. I'm going to do it October 1st. And what am I going to hold it accountable? December 1st. After I follow up everybody that came to it. Oops. So you see where I'm going with this. Yeah. It's where you keep your strategies. Is that for real? Like I could use? Yes, ma'am. If I, for my friends to come. Yes. To stretch. Oh, yes. That's and guess what? They come in and it's a real estate office. They, you, yeah. you just have to schedule it. Um, <laughs> we're going to do a class in here on Thursday, teaching you how to do client events. And we're even giving you the client event to invite your clients to. The event is going to be on Thursday, October 6th, in our parking lot. It's going to be trunk or treat. So what you'll do is you're going to invite all of your sphere to come to it. You're going to decorate your trunk for Halloween, have candy or whatever to give out to all the kids that come. And that's going to be from 6 to 7.15. We're going to have some prizes for the best costume at 7.30. We're going to start the new Hocus Pocus movie on the big screen in the parking lot and watch Hocus Pocus. So you don't even have to pay for the event. Refreshment provided. All you have to do is come, invite your, your people. And we're even providing you the invitations to do it, both on social media and by mail. That's why we're doing it this Thursday, so you can get that stuff out for October 6th. And then I would do a campaign around it, and we're going to talk about that Thursday. Promote it, promote it, remind them, remind them, text them, all of those things. So the office trunk retreat. We also do pictures with Santa at Christmas. We do pictures with the Easter Bunny in the spring. But you can do your own. When is the trunk retreat? October 6th. All right, are we ready for the final? Drum roll, please. If we do everything we just said and only do one transaction per month, what's our net income going to be after all of our expenses? Almost $60,000, $59,737. And this just summarizes everything we just did. And what do we have to do? We have to go on one listing appointment a month, oh, and one buyer appointment a month. Boy, that seems doable, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, let's say we're PJ and we go, man, that's simple. That's not enough. Heck, I want to do 24 transactions. All you do is change that number. Guess what? It recalculates everything. You go on 1.5 listing appointments a month and two buyer points. Okay? Now, I don't expect you to retain everything we just talked about. This is something that you can do. Work on it. Then bring it to your mentor, <laughs> bring it to me or to Rachel, and we'll help you with it. Or we'll sit or make an appointment with us and we'll sit down and do your one, yours one on one. Juan and I did her one on one last week. Do you understand it better now you've gone through it twice? Oh, yeah. It's like, yeah, <clears throat> absolutely. I think it's super important. Okay. Any questions about that? We want to move on. Yeah, lots better. Yeah. Would you mind hitting the lights yeah. for a moment? And I'm bad about names until I say it a few times. Tell me your name again. <laughs> Kate. Kate. Oh, okay. You have to help me with that. <laughs> okay. And there's a sample in your book. I'm only, I'm not going to go much into the 411 tonight because I think it's more important to talk about lead generation. We'll come back to it as we have time at the end. I really want to get more into the regeneration piece because that's what's going to be the second. Does everybody know how to find a calendar of the training classes? On the internet. You can sync it with your phone so you know what classes are there all the time. All right. Let's move to. The next section, lead, lead gen, page one. I like this diagram because it shows you lead capture. Does anybody know the difference between prospecting versus marketing? What was the question? Prospecting versus marketing. What's the difference? Prospecting is like active business solicitation. To marketing is like you just put materials out to your people to call you. Yeah. So he's right. Prospecting is like 
I call Stacy, I'm deliberate. I call PJ, I'm deliberate. I call Jill, I'm deliberate. Marketing means I put a big sign up. I'm on a grocery cart. I put something in the mail to a neighborhood that I've never met anybody. So we're doing both. Remember, we had both of them on the business plan. They go into your database. <coughs> Needs of relationships, and then contact, and then make contact, make contact, nurturing, nurturing, nurturing. Prepare those contacts for conversation, and then keep repeating. It's it's just like this big factory where they just, it just keeps going through all the time. What well, my big thing when I came here is I would I felt like I would do business and I'd be great, I'd be busy, 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 and then all of a sudden everything would close and I'd be out of business. And that's called the real estate roller coaster. You're busy, 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 then you have nothing. And then you're busy, 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 then you have nothing. You want consistency. I wish I would have learned at a, at a younger age in real estate about leverage. That contract is closed. Are you making money doing paperwork? Get somebody else doing that. You need to understand it. You need to be able to do it in a pinch, but get somebody else doing that. Making pretty mailers and mailing them out and putting stamps on. Are you really making money doing that? No. Leverage that out. Get somebody else to do it. Do you know what the average life is of a postcard? 13 seconds. 13 seconds. Out of the mailbox. Oh, yeah, that's from Bellin. Oh, yeah, she sells real estate in the trash can. It's okay. It's, it's serving its purpose because it's saying she, it's making her top of mind. It's good. It, it's serving its purpose. Does it have to be the most brilliant postcard ever? No. Make sure you get something out more important. If I call you and I make contacts, is that generating money? If I'm showing you a house and helping you meet your needs or doing a consultation to help you sell a house or buy a house, is that generating money? That's where your time needs to be spent. That's where you, you, you need to decide. Am I going to, you know, that 80 20 rule? Am I going to spend my time on the 20% that's going to bring me money and leverage off this other? Or am I going to get caught up in this other and only get this little bit of the eight, of the 20%? <clears throat> I hated that real estate rule. <laughs> um, on page five, it shows us it's a calendar and it's how to get in your three hour habit. I'm a visual person. Writing it down sometimes is a good thing because you can write down. Time block your day. Who am I going to contact? What am I going to do? And so, for instance, if we looked here, and I'm going to do my lead generation on Monday from 9 to 12. I'm going to put at 9 o'clock. Who am I going to call? What am I going to say? 10 o'clock. Make contact, make contact, make contact. 11 o'clock, follow up. Then guess what? I've got the rest of the day to do whatever. Paperboard, follow up, postcards, whatever the case. Rinse and repeat. Do the same thing. <clears throat> I'm not going to read every script in the book to you guys because you guys can read scripts on your own. Know that we have more scripts than you could ever possibly use. I have, we have some that are in your book here. In the back of the room on those shelves, there's a binder with scripts, but you can access it from anywhere. Let me show you. It's on our office intranet. And we come back up here in our market center documents. <clears throat> I always forget where it is. I have to look. Under learning resources, script book part one and script book part two. And you can go here and you can pull all kinds of scripts. So you never have a reason to not know what to say when you're going to contact someone. So are any of you sports enthusiasts? So football, anybody? Who, who's your favorite quarterback? American football. Oh, I don't know good with that. <laughs> no, we'll go ahead and say Josh Allen. Okay, who do you play for? Does he still play for the Bills? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll say Aaron Rodgers. He plays for the Packers. He's not my favorite, but okay, we all know who he is. Aaron Rodgers. Is he a good quarterback? Yeah. 
Okay, is, is he better than the quarterback for the is he in, in Washington? He doesn't raise there anymore. Huh? He doesn't play there anymore. You're talking about Tom Brady? No, he yeah. he played for the Pates, Patriots. Patriots. Well, he's Tom Brady. Because everybody knows who Tom Brady is. Okay, Tom Brady. Brady. Tom Brady. Tom Brady. Tom Brady. Yeah. Is Tom Brady better than yes. Aaron Yes. Is Tom Brady better than the guy who's a quarterback in Washington? Yes. How about Tampa Bay? Yeah, Tom Brady is the quarterback. Well, that's why right. he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's not. How about Cleveland Brown? Yes. Okay. Hands down. Yes. So, how right. many hours a week do you think Tom Brady practices? I mean, 20 times 7. Because... So you think it's really just 20? Because let's let's think about it. What's Tom, Tom Brady practice? Tom Brady, he exercises. He watches films. He meets with his coach. He meets with his team. Right. I'm saying 20 hours a day for seven days a week. His dietitian it's probably insane. meets with him. He uh, throws the ball. He probably has a separate coaching session just for quarterbacks. So he probably practices how many hours a week? A lot. What's 20 times seven? More than you are a week. That's 280. Probably 60, 80 one hours at least, would you say? One for, okay. 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 For how many hours a playing time? Three and a half hours. Does he play all three hours? No, no. no. So he's practicing 60, 80 hours a week for what well, is he in 45 minutes, an hour? <laughs> so do you think that that makes him better than Cleveland Brown's quarterback? How many maybe he may only practice 40 hours a week or 50 hours a week, whereas Tom Brady's doing 60 or 80. It's the same thing with real estate. Where I'm going with this is the difference between good and great. It's the type of practice. The scripts and role play. And a lot of people, I don't want to be a script person. Scripts are nothing more than conversations. So if um, if Stacy is a for sale by the owner and I call her and I say, ring, ring. Hello. Hi, Stacy. This is Daniel Bishop with Keller Williams. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Oh, I'm doing great. So I noticed you had your house listed for sale by the owner. Thank you. So what do you think the next thing is she's probably going to say? Why are you calling me? I'm not interested. I'm not interested. Why are you calling me? Sorry. Well, I'm so glad you asked that, Stacey. See, the reason for my call today is I wondered if you had decided where you want to move when you sell your house. You see, I, for all the properties I list, I prospect for buyers for them every day. And I thought you might be a potential buyer for one of my listings. Isn't that what you'd want someone to do if you listed your house? So I'm coming from contribution. I want to help her. I want to figure out where she's going. I really want to get in a relationship with her. So if I can get her interested in a place that she wants to go, then guess what? She might have a little more interest in getting her house sold. So where are you moving? And this is the part where you, he who asks great questions wins the game. He who asks questions is in control of the conversation. You want to peel the onion. So Stacey, tell me, where do you plan to move when you sell your house? Um, I don't know yet. I think I want to buy a house in Bexley. In Bexley, oh great. Well, tell me why Bexley. Uh, I grew up there. My family's from there. I have a lot of friends that still live there. Uh, so kind of going back to your, your home, your childhood. Yeah, right. yeah, oh, very cool. So when would you like to be in Bexley? Well, I need to sell my house first. But ideally, if you could choose a time, when would you like to be there? Yeah, probably the next 30 to 45 days. 30 to 45 days. Great. So um, what, what things in Bexley do you like? Tell me, do you have favorite restaurants? Or? Uh, we have a cute little Italian place. What's that called? Giuseppe. Giuseppe. Oh, uh, oh I've been there. I love it. We yeah. have great ice cream places. Right. Right. and Johnson. <laughs> so I'm trying to build... I'm trying to understand why she wants to go there. Sometimes it'll be, I want to get there before school starts because I have kids. I want to move there because of a job. Or, or, <laughs> <laughs> your cat, they're not friendly in that <laughs> So as I'm getting there, I'm also trying to figure out what her emotional connection is. That's. It's her childhood home. She likes to go out to dinner there. She likes the people there. She, and so I'm building the emotional wrap. So Stacey, if you didn't get your household and get to Bexley, would, would that be a problem for you? 
It would, yeah. I think it's definitely on my bucket list of things to do. Okay. So can I help you find homes in Bexley and start taking a look around and see what's there? Would you mind, would you like to see what's currently on the market? I think I would like that, yeah. I'll tell you what, I'm going to set you up on a search. In addition to that, I'm going to send you this great app I have. So if you're out driving around and you pull up in front of a house, you can pull up that app and you can see all the amenities of that house, the pictures, square footage, everything. Does that sound good? Yeah. How long do you plan to try to sell your house on your own before you would consider listing your house? You know, I'm thinking maybe the next three weeks, we'll see kind of how the market goes. And I'm, I am getting interest on it, just no offers yet. So have you been showing it? I have been showing it. Well, you know what, Stacey, that's great. You know what I would like to propose? If I can show you that I can net you more money for your property and help you sell it and get the best sleep for sure in the next few weeks, is that of, of interest to you? Only if you can net me more money. Okay. In addition to that, you said you had interest on it. I'll do one better. You know, right now, you're not getting very good exposure on your house. Your house is, is in a great location, but it's tucked back in a neighborhood. Unless somebody drives back there, they're really not finding it. So you know what? With my company, we have over 780 sites that we syndicate to. So what I would like to propose is I come out and take a look at your house. And if, you know, if we meet, we're fit, and I can show you how I can net you more money, I recommend you go ahead and list it now. And guess what? The people that have looked at your house, I'll write them in as an exception. So if you sell it to them in the next two weeks, you don't have to pay me. But in the meantime, I'm going to give you a lot more exposure. And guess what? In this market, I think we'll drive that price up. Does that sound fair? I think that sounds good. Okay, great. That script is in here now. Did it sound scripted what I said? No. No. Because I internalized it and I had a conversation with her. But anytime I talk to somebody in that scenario, I want to go to that. I've never seen that script though, so far I like that. It's a bold script. Bold, bold really? script. Oh. So look at the old, bold section. <laughs> it's not in this. There's another one. It's about the three P's. When you're trying to get a list of appointments. Yeah, yeah. You can just call the uh, first Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, that's called leverage. <laughs> <laughs> so she didn't do that. <laughs> So I actually, when I got started in this business, I got started on first sale by owners. And they were a little more plentiful then, and they weren't selling. Over the last two years, first sale by owners, a lot of them were able to sell on them. But guess what? That tide's turning a bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if they're not selling right away. Our team just got a first sale by owner contract uh, yesterday. I was just, I was just, what did you guys think about? Well, when I used to call on them, I used to tell them that. This, this is what I would do. And this was before I would tell them in her script to go by. I would talk to them. I'd say, hi, I'm Dayla Bishop with EGR. And I know she had your house for sale by owner. Tell me, have you had much interest on it? Oh, yeah, we've been having great interest. Oh, that's wonderful. You know what? I make it a point because I'm working with buyers in your area to know all the inventory. And because your house isn't on the MLS, I really don't know your house. And I think you might be a potential for one of my buyers. So would it be okay if I can <laughs> for them? Oh, that's great. That's fine. And, and I would also throw in there, most agents won't work with for sale by owners because they end up doing all of the work in, in the transaction. Or my philosophy is I want to find the best house for my buyer and I make it a point to know all the inventory. And if I could get in front of their face, I could convert them. So, okay, I, okay. I'm, so, not, I'm not saying she's obviously better, but I, I, wanna, I just, I have a for sale by owner in my neighborhood and you're asking entirely too it's much. really overpriced. Entirely too much. I mean, like, there's, so, but he's one of these, like. Overpriced partners. houses will sell if they're on the market long enough, but he's not getting any exposure. Yeah. So I would probably go with the exposure. Then I would go with the comps. And then I would take the comps and I would print them out with the pictures or take your laptop with the pictures. And I would say, in your neighborhood, this is what's sold. And I would have do the quick CMA and I would have it because it spells out everything. It'll show if they have a three car garage versus a two, if they have a finished basement, because you look at the ATFLS. It'll show um, 
if you look at the pictures, are they updated? Do they have you know stainless appliances? Do they have granite? Do they have you know hardwood floors? Do they have a deck? Do they have a patio? Whatever the case is, and say, okay, here's your property. Here's the highest one that's sold. So tell me how you think your property compares to that. How does your property compare to that? Help them self-discover. If I told you your house is overpriced, you're just going to get ticked off and shut down. But if I say, I'm curious how you came up with your price, and I would like to share with you what the comps are in here, and then sit down and, and help them self-discover. Well, yeah, mine's better than this, but it's not better than that one. And if there's others on the market, go show it to them. I've done that before. Yeah. All of every Monday, and ask them how many, how many showings or interest calls did you get? I literally stopped in. I stopped in and maybe he showed it to me. Why? Because I saw his car in the driveway and I just stopped on the door and like. Okay. Well, and the other thing is, you got to peel the onion further. Why is he stuck? Where does he want to go? Yeah. But it, Why does he want to get there? I, I, yeah, I did ask all those questions. Yeah. It's just. And when you get the listing day, there's a whole list of questions to help you peel the onion. Mm -hmm. I don't want to spend too much time on that, but. Is that you, Jill, this week, listing day? Yes. Okay. Jill's going to answer that. <laughs> I mean, Rachel. Practice your scripts, internalize them. So it's conversation, it's not script. I was looking in these scripts um, for the full one that you were talking about. I think this is part two, I think mean, it's missing. Oh, really? Like, yeah, because it goes, it says the bold FISBO. It's, well, I'm not sure. Which There's more than one script though for it. Okay. Well, either way, all those pages aren't, the pages aren't like copied. Okay. I'll, I'll make a note when I go look at it. Okay. Page 13, the, I call it the bullseye. Your met circle, the core advocates, you want to spend a lot of time touching them. They're the ones that no matter what, if somebody says real estate, they're going to say, Call Devin. They're going to say, call Bella. That's your mom. That's your brother. That's your sister. That's your husband. That's your past client that you sold more than one for. Then the next ring, the advocates, they're going to promote you, but they're not going to be the, the um, drop dead and you've got to call Bella no matter what. Mm -hmm. And then it goes out from there. Your allied resources, those are like your lenders and your title people and your inspectors and People you have relationships with that can refer you business. So think about where business comes from. People buy and sell real estate because typically of life changes. Somebody's getting married, somebody's getting divorced, somebody's having a baby, somebody's downsizing because their kids went to school, somebody died. So who can you align yourself with? Another profession that also helps people when they're going through changes. A divorce and probate attorney, a financial planner, clergy, people can find in their minister or whatever, um, doctors, nursing home uh, administrators, because people that are going in nursing homes may need to sell their house to come in there. So in addition to your sphere, for some of those people you've never met yet, you might want to align yourself with a core advocate to refer business. And if they say, hey, I've already got a realtor I'm working with, I'm not asking for all your business. I'm going to need to refer people to attorneys from time to time. I'm just asking that you share the love and give me business from time to time as well. So think about who you can get in business with in those areas. And we'll actually have a I didn't teach LinkedIn last month, and I thought we had the uh, database challenge in here. Jill, are you guys giving that out, mentoring, where they come up with a list of who do you know that's a bookkeeper and who's an architect? No, no, no. Okay. I thought we had it here. I'm just kidding. Yeah, we did. Can you make a note of that? Get with your mentor <laughs> and do that. There's an exercise. And you can go through it and you complete. Who do you know that's an architect? Who do you know that is a plumber? Who do you know that's an electrician? Who do you know that's a 
attorney? Who do you know that's an accountant, et cetera? And that way it helps trigger people. Do I have it in my database? Do I align myself? It's a great exercise to add in your database. <clears throat> also, you want to classify your contacts. So when you put them into command, you want to label them so that you can communicate with them. Because you may not want to send a message to every single person in your command. So you might have you might and you might have more than one tag on them. So maybe they're a family member. Maybe they're your Christmas card list. Maybe they're your Christmas card list and a past client. So if I want to send something to just my past clients and say I'm having a client past client appreciation event, I can pull just those people out and send them. Or if I want to send to my kids' soccer team that I'm going to provide snack. Of course, it's going to have a label with my stuff on it. <laughs> then I can send it to just that. So if you want to be able to sort them to use them. So when you put your contacts in your database, you want to be strategic about it. <clears throat> we, went, we went through the eight by eight, the 33 touch and all of that. There are samples of those in here, but we've made it so easy for you with a command and a smartphone. Your brand, I do believe that taglines, brands, um, logos have a place in our world because it differentiates you from other people. So whatever your brand is going to be, and if you need some help thinking and creating one up, let me know. I'm the queen of corn and cheese. I love corn and cheesy because I hate sticks. <laughs> so when, just to put it in perspective, I'm Bela and I'm from Delaware. And when I grew up there, my nickname for the last 30 whatever years has always been Delaware, because I was Dela from Delaware. <laughs> and it always stuck. People always called me that. So I put it on my license plate. It's still on my license plate. And my tagline was because I primarily worked in Delaware County and Northern Franklin County. Dot, dot, dot. Another one sold. Dot, dot, dot. That's why they call it Dela. Stupid, you know, corny, whatever. But it worked. People remembered my name. They remembered what that was. I had my I I did Christmas parades and I would brand my Delaware. I would and my kids would hand stuff out, you know, during the parade. I had a horse and sulky because Delaware is the home of the Pacers. So I did everything around what I was from. Um, my Christmas card was a picture of me with racehorses because again, the little brown jug, Delaware, Delaware, um, whatever yours is. Think about it. if it goes with your name, if it goes with you're a Spanish speaker, maybe it has something to do with, you know, my heart is your corazón. <laughs> um, the heart of your home is my corazón. I don't know. <laughs> I would have to, I would want to think about it, but I'm just saying, we came up with some good ones over the years. So, you know, Jill, are you using a tagline of any kind right now? Um, I have done, um, I sell one yard at a time. Yeah. That's one of those. That was like selling Columbus one yard at a time. Yeah, there you go. Eric makes her brain. You know, husband wife team, spouses selling houses. Oh, one yard at a time. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Oh, that was good. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. All right. Um, top, page 35, 34 and 35. This is your homework. If you do this, you're going to win. Call five people in your sphere of influence. Monday through Friday. That's only five. Five phone calls to friends, the people you like. Write five personal notes to people in your sphere of influence that you just called Monday through Friday. So after you call them, write a note to follow up. Five visits. Visit five listings in your area of expertise. Either make an appointment to preview a home or go on a realtor tour and view hopefully five homes that are on tour. Hold one open house a week. Open houses are gold mines, guys. Master your scripts and be 
the person who knows that neighborhood when you go in. So if you're going in a neighborhood to hold an open house, do a search for that neighborhood before you go. So you know every property that's listed right now. Do a market analysis so you know everything that's closed or just gone into contract. You want to be the master of that neighborhood when you're in that house that day. So if they walk in and that house is not the fit for them, you want to know all the other inventory that's available. You want to know what just closed or what, you know, what, what's going on in that neighborhood. And guess what? Perception's reality. You are you look like the expert of that neighborhood, even though it might be the first time you ever stepped foot in. And then add five new contacts in your database every day, Monday through Friday. That's 25 in a week. If you do that every day for the next two months, you're going to have a fabulous January. Everything you do in real estate today doesn't show up until 30 days at least from now, if not 45 or 60. It's not the do it in the instant gratification game. It takes a little bit to get that momentum. Then on page 35, here's 101 different lead generation ideas. All we're asking you is to choose three methods that suit your personality. Because it's not just about making calls. Create an action plan or pick a smart plan around it and find someone, your mentor, <clears throat> to hold you accountable. Garage sales. Do the neighborhood garage sale that in a neighborhood if they're going to do one. Offer to everybody, send out something to your farm. If that's the farm, send them all postcard. And then say, oh, I'm going to do this. If you want to have your house on the tour, on the map that we're going to hand out that day, please contact me with your name, phone number, email address. And you can even <laughs> set up through command a, oh my gosh, what's it called? I'm drawing a blank. Landing page, so that when they go there, it automatically takes what they entered and puts it right in your database. And you don't have to enter it again. And then guess what? You just add some of your database. Then you make the map with all the stars on where the garage sales are. Right? They can be handed out that day. Of course, brand is your information. Your open house signs, all you do is get new tops made for them that say garage sale. Of course, brand is your information. So you'll provide the signs for everybody that day. At the entrance, at their individual places, you're going to hand out maps. Guess what? Be present that day. Walk around the pool or pool of waters with a sticker on it with your branded information. How many contacts are you going to pick up in that garage sale from posting and doing it for the neighborhood? Um, mortgage companies, chamber of commerce, principals, divorces, judges, charities, homeowners associations. Get in and cahoots with somebody in the homeowners association because they're going to know what's going on in that neighborhood who's thinking about listing. Home buyer reps. New builds are another source if you can't find something for your buyers. You know, those home builder reps get lonely all day in their reps or in their models. Go take them a cup of coffee or a donut or something and make friends. I, when I was new in the business, Schumacher Homes, um, you need to have your own lot to build one of their homes on. Mm -hmm. I knew the girl, I happened to know her, I used to babysit her when she was little, that was the rep in there. And they didn't have the real estate license, they didn't have a way to look for land. So I would go in and anybody she had that needed a lot to build one of their houses, I would put them on a land search, help them buy the lot. And if they had a house to list, then I'd list their house. It was a great way to get started. So you, again, home reps even have people come in to buy their homes, but they have a house to sell. Become friends with them. Cleaning people, they know what's going on. Hairdressers, they really know what's going on with everybody. <laughs> yeah. So go through this list and find three of those that are going to work for you. Now you can track your appointments in command, but I've got some manual pages in here so you can write down who you're going to contact, what you're going to do with them, appointment times, and all of that if you want to use a manual track. Uh, we already talked about geographical farms. We talked about FISBOs. When you have a listing day, they're going to, uh, Jill's going to go over our listing presentation. And there's an abbreviated version of it that you use for a, um, an expired or a pre listing packet. And then the full blown version for when you do your listing presentation. Actually, that's right. 
Oh, it is. <laughs> yeah. The listing portion or the uh, expired portion. What I would do is every day, and the other thing I didn't mention, I should, and I'm glad I just thought of this. The MLS is your best tool. This business. You need to be a student at it. Take the MLS class with the board. Find the tips and tricks and all the things that they do. You can get CD for it too. But what you want to do is every day, you want to set up hot sheets for yourself. So neighborhoods you're working, especially where you're farming, you want to know what's happening in that neighborhood. Now that came on the market, this one had a price reduction. This one went in contract. This one closed. And if you set up a hot sheet, it's a search of sorts for that neighborhood. Every time something happens in the neighborhood, you're going to get a notification. So you're going to know what's happening in that neighborhood. <clears throat> um, with expires, I would go through area. I would look at all the expires. You could put that one of the search criteria. You can look at all the expires and decide which areas you want to target or go after. And what I did, I had a packet that was already ready to go. I had scads of them. And I had a cover letter that all I did was insert that those people's name from that neighborhood. And you know, what if I wanted to add something person? And I made the point from four to six to go deliver them by hand, hoping I would catch somebody coming home from work. I went to one house and I, I the people happened to be home. I knocked on the door and I said, Hi, I'm Dale with Color Lands. I noticed that your house expired. I had no idea. Their sign's still in the front yard. They had no idea it wasn't on the market. So how did that make them feel about their agent? They hadn't contacted them. But I'd love to talk to you. I, I was specializing in houses that didn't sell the first time. Because the price. Showed them tops. Move forward. That was 14 years ago. <laughs> it was. It's really <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it's probably more like 16 or 17. <laughs> Um, and I'm not going to spend time on the presentations because we're going to go over that later this week. Um, I have more scripts in here. Study your script, practice your script. When you can't read, sleep, go to sleep at night, read scripts. You can practice your scripts when you're telling people what to do. Mm -hmm. Like people ask me what I do, and I'm like, well, I'm a co host. How's that go? Role play your script right in front of them. Tell them what you do. A lot of this, uh, that's true. And a lot of this left here is script. So spend some time going over that. And then flip forward to page 68. When you do an open house, this is right out of the ship. You want to do the seventh level open house. So skip down to the bottom of the page because this has all seven levels. You put a yard for sun. Yard. You can tell the long day. <laughs> I've been at this for 12 hours today. You, start <laughs> you put a sign in the yard. You put a sign in the yard with balloons and riders. So the riders say open Sunday to the floor, balloons. And you want to do it earlier in the week so that the people who drive by it every day see it. Directional signs with balloons and riders. So at the entrance to the neighborhood, you want signs. You want signs at every turn. And at the entrance of the neighborhood, you don't want just one sign. Have any of you ever driven on 23 north of Delaware between Delaware and Waldo? You'll see a sign that says eggs, sorghum, jam, two miles ahead, sausage, bacon, well, whatever, a mile and a half ahead. By the time you get to Mom Wilson's, you know you're there, right? Because you've got all these signs leading up to it. You want your open house to be the same way. Otherwise, if you have one just at the entrance, here goes the car. Oh, there was an open house, but I've already passed it. You want one, you know, 30 feet, 20 feet, and then at the entrance at least. So if you like, oh, there's an open house, got to turn here, give some time to think. Flyers the week before, invitations, and post it on websites. Put it in realtor.com or ask the listing agent if you want someone else's to put it in realtor.com. Get on your social media, send out invitations, send invitations to the neighbors. Tell them to invite who they want to be their next neighbor. Send it to your sphere. Boost it on Facebook. Do an ad um, on, on Facebook through command. We get, if you do a regular ad on Facebook and boost it, you get this result. If you do it through command because of Keller, we have a partnership with them, you get this result. 
So it's a huge tool. Invite a hundred neighbors minimum. Use Mojo and dial around and call those neighbors to remind them. And then pull four other open houses in the same neighborhood in various price ranges. Well, if there's no other listings that you have in that neighborhood, if there's other agents that have them, call and invite them to hold open houses that day too, and you can direct people to each other. It's just like a neighborhood garage sale. You get more people in the neighborhood because there's going to be a bunch of garage sales versus just one. Same way with several open houses. One of it, offer to, if somebody comes to your open house and they register, means they can use their name, their phone number, their email address, their mailing address. They could register for a $50 gas card. So things to entice them to want to come to your open house. I have a question yeah. about open houses. If you, there's a couple of people in my neighborhood who their house is listed for sale. Um, they're not doing like an open house. Like, can I go up to them and say, hey, can I host an open house for you? You mean there is with an agent? Yeah. Yeah, call that agent and say, you know, I'm an agent with Keller Williams. And I happen to live in this neighborhood and I wondered if I could host an open house. So you're listening. You can ask them. You're going to have the best results asking our agents, but. They may not, they may say no. I do work for that. But my next question, which I was really trying to ask is as far as staging, like how do you go about getting a stager? Like if their house just, you know, has an opportunity <laughs> when you look inside, like do well, you have? I mean, if you have an eye for things, obviously you can tell them, but letting a stager deliver the bad news is always a good idea. Okay. If, especially if they need it. And we have a list, list of stagers. And they'll give them oh, an estimate. Okay. They don't have to pay for it in advance. They go get the estimate. And I would just talk to them about, um, you know, staged homes sell quicker than not staged homes. Okay. And they let the stager do the, the hard work on, on that. Okay. We had a house listed in Highland Lakes. And back then it was a, a well, actually was listed at nine, 890 or 900,000. I forget which. And sat on the market. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Well, they had this tile that looked like it came from Mexico and had little Mexican dogs footprints all over it in the whole house. Well, not everybody has that taste. So what the stager was able to do, the heavy lifting on is come in and say, you really need to remove this tile. It would be nice if you did the hardwood floors to match what's in your TV room. And we've got furniture because it was already empty. We have, we have furniture we can bring in and stage around. Did that, they, they removed it. It was like a $30,000 fix to redo the floors. They painted a wall, did the floors, put the hardwood, and that's what the expensive part was. Back on the market, the full asking price within three weeks. After it's out of the market for six months. It's sometimes easier. It was in Highland Lake Stacy. Yeah, yeah. Well, that made me think of my parents too. When I saw my parents off in Highland Lakes, um, I had mentioned that we needed to clean up the exterior and just make it look more modern and you know, paint the front door and do all these other couple of things. And then my parents, which it could have been because they were my parents, and that completely did. blew me off, right? And yeah, I'm their child, right? Mm -hmm. Um, I will always forever be a baby in their eyes. But um the stager came in, first thing she said to them was oh, I really don't like your shutters. They really need to be a different color and you should really paint the front door, which is literally what I said to them for weeks. Yes. Yes. But then my dad was like, oh, well, if she thinks that, then we should do that. And that's, you know, they did that. And they got a great place to their house. But it was just like, sometimes people don't hear what you're saying because of the relationship they have with you. That's true. Or it's because, they need to hear it two or three times, which we used to be in jewelry sales prior to being in the real estate industry. And we would flip over and pass along different clients. So and selling if, partners where you would yeah. have somebody else in his sales. So if they said no to me once, it's harder for them to say no to me and her and say yeah. no to me twice. So every time you had an objection, you would like pass along to a different person and they would communicate with that. Whoever's buying. I still make yeah. <laughs> and, and that's how I work with the team too. If someone on my team is making an objection, they immediately pull me in and I will call and I will try to resolve the issue or 
if they're being stubborn about price or it doesn't matter, it doesn't have to be a bad objection. Well, and here's another objection. Sometimes people don't have the money to put into it. For sure. And here's another solution you have by being a Keller Williams agent. We have Keller offers. And it, it's a two-hour investment. You do it online to get the certification. And what, what happens, as long as your client, your seller, has a 680 credit score or 650 credit score, 680 or above, they can get an interest-free loan for up to one year, up to $70,000 to do whatever improvements they need to make in their house. And then they pay it back at closing and they, could, they can get it ready to, to show. Does that have to be owner occupied? Um, I don't think so. Just be anywhere. Yeah. And to piggyback on that, there's a, a company called Homestretch, and they're here local. <laughs> they have contractors on staff lined up. They have painters. They have people to do flooring. And what they'll do is, if you use them to do the work, they'll come in and do. They'll, they'll do an appointment. They'll do it all at our cart, and they'll come in and do it all, and they can get it done. I was talking to one of our agents that has used them on the last two transactions. Both transactions, the cost was around $8,000 for both houses. And they both needed different things. One was all new carpet, painting, new light fixtures put in, and landscaping. The other one was landscaping, painting the outside, a little paint on the inside. What else did you tell me to do? And maybe some flooring, but not all flooring. And they both ended up being around eight. It's just coincidence. But they, what they do is they have like four carpets. So they've got four cans and four grades to pick from. So it's not like the, the client has all these choices. With the paints, they know what colors of paint how they're working right now. They have four grades, four cans, or whatever to pick from. Um, the light fixtures, that kind of stuff. And they come in, all their contractors are in, boom, done. And then they can use the Keller offers to pay for it. And then at closing, they pay off that loan to move on to their next place. And it's a personal loan, so it's not tied to the, ha the house. So they can go ahead and write and get a, get a mortgage pre approved and write on their next house while they're doing it. Does that affect them getting a loan? For no. Because they just go off the credit score. They don't have to right. pull away. Correct. Mm -hmm. hmm. So, so that's another tool we have is Keller Williams Agents. Can we use those people for investment properties? Probably. You would have to call. I could, I mean, I can give you their number. <laughs> you said they're called a home stretch. Mm -hmm. The other one is called home offers. It's Keller offers. Keller offers. That's for the seller. That's for the loan. Zero interest one. Yeah. Then you have to complete an online course to be able to use it as an agent. Home stretch. Evan Lewis is his name. His number is 740. 417-3688, super responsive. So it's just another tool. That's why you have to keep coming to classes because there's more stuff all the time and we can't go over everything with one field. You would remember all that. Um, page 71, that is an open house sign-in sheet. There's also one on the internet you can use when you're doing your open house. There's there's things that you need you can do before your open house to get ready. Like you obviously choose the house to hold open, coach the sellers about prepping it, um, design the ads. If you need to put ads anywhere like Facebook and first newspapers now, <clears throat> MLS remarks, etc. So there's a uh, list of things to do to get ready. And then scripts around open houses. My favorite script was my own. <laughs> And I would say, hi, how are you? So are you looking for a house in the Delaware area? Oh, well, that's great. I'll bring you to Delaware. Oh, wonderful. As they're walking around and talking, I would say, you know what? I'd love to sell you this house. But if this isn't the perfect house for you, I would love to help you find the perfect house. And then 
get more information. So that was the script that I used to convert them to try to be you know, a client moving forward. Questions you have? It's been a long day, and I don't know everybody. I know. <laughs> Should this come out at five o'clock? Okay. Yes. Is it five to eight also? Okay. Yeah. So it's Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, mm -hmm. and Friday? No. No. Okay. We knew nobody'd be here on Friday. Okay. And I know it's a lot of input information to pack in the one we make. Oh, good. I'm glad to hear that. I'm boring to death. Great. All right. So it's, I just want to ask again, you kind of already touched on I need to get a little way. I need to write sign in so I know who was here. Um, when you said we can put in mailboxes, is there like any restrictions to that? Because I've seen like two. You're not supposed to put in mailbox. You can mail. Oh, but you can't put in it. You can hang it on the outside of the mailbox. Oh, but it's a federal offense to get that one. Okay. Thank yeah, you. no federal offenses today. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. I'm so glad I asked that. Me too. <laughs> I don't want to come get you out of real estate jail. <laughs> wow. Um, Good thing I asked. 